Mark, take it away. Welcome, everyone, to Project Bodybuilding. This is the recap for the 2024 Detroit Pro with YouTube's most handsome man and his guest. Who's the guest? You tell me. Oh, well, you just steal the show, you know, so it's kind of hard for me to be the host when I have such a devilishly handsome and so refined gentleman, you know, right next to me. Behind you? Yeah, that's what we're going to be blur. talking about. Good Vito, good looking guy. Martin, I would say that's a little bit of a stretch. Doesn't look like Martin. That's Martin. I know, but it's all blurred up. Looks like James Hollings had for goodness sakes. Yeah, we'll get to him because he should have done the show. But I want to talk, obviously, you said in the very, very professional, very well done intro that we will be recapping, reviewing, whatever you want to call it, the 2024 Detroit Pro that just happened this week. This was Fuad Abiyad show. Um, this is his first attempt at a pro show. He does a lot of smaller amateur shows over there in Canada. Um, but this is his first attempt at a pro show, and he said he'll still be doing it. So this is is his first pro show. I doubt he'll extend to more, but I don't know because he, he hit this one out of the park. I got to say, with all the stage production, the only thing that was missing was the lineup, you know, which is a big part of it. But you know, we still have a competitive lineup, so I hope he continues to do this one. Maybe he can start another one. Who knows? But I want to get into the top six because there was only six guys. But before that. I want to get into the guest posing. Marks, Mark, were you familiar with the guest posing that we had at the show? If you want to call it that. Yeah, yeah, Im impromptu, you know. Um, let's see here. Oh, I liked it. I liked it. I could have used a couple other guys in there. It would have been more interesting. But still, it was a two, two good guys that you're going to want to look at. Realistically, they're pretty close. The Olympia. Can't see Curry coming back this year. You 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 don't see Curry coming back this year. Well, I mean getting into that top four now. Really? If he's any if he's anywhere if he's no better than he was last year, he's well going down. Well this year he, he had a health scare. You know, he was in the hospital like the night before or how much did that affect him though? I would say a lot. Just personally. How old is he? You know, he's actually not that old. I thought he was like mid-40s, but I think Curry's he's like... Curry's older than me. No, Cur like Curry's 40, older 41, than me. 41. 41 or 42 or something like that. Is he? Yeah. All right. Let me... I'm just going to unplug this. cold in here this morning mark do you just see the window or do you see my entire computer screen no i see the screen quint beastwood there okay um it was under i'm just gonna check hunters tagged okay so so it was, you, you didn't mention it was hunter labrada and samson Douda. it was hunter labrada and, and samson Douda. so samson yeah, being a hostage Samson being a hostile athlete was here at the show giving out amateur awards and so was Hunter Labrada. And they, you know, stripped off, stripped down and got into a little guest posing, you know, just did a couple of poses. Wasn't too incredibly long. Wasn't really planned or anything. Um, oh, I'm sure they said they were, they were agreed to it. Yeah. You know, maybe a minute before like, Hey, you want to, let's just go ahead and go at it for a little bit because they will yeah. be doing this same thing a month later in Pittsburgh. And that one, they definitely, know about and they've had known known about for at least a month prior to even talking about it right now um but what did you think of these two gentlemen well i think samson's at a point now where he's never had this type of tissue mm -hmm, on him for, for a while sure. <clears throat> i apologize yeah and hunter looks big compared to him but it's the stages that they're at know what I'm saying Hunter's yeah been getting been getting big for a while here and Samson like I said just put on a layer of water who's just now starting to put on some new tissue perhaps yeah, so, yeah. I, I will, Hunter definitely impressed me more but like you said uh, Samson's probably at the stage where he is off 
Probably not completely. I don't think most of these guys come off completely. It's probably just better that way. But probably he's probably more conditioned from behind and things of that nature. For sure. Just coming off uh, the two Arnolds and whatnot. Um, exactly. But, you know, Hunter, I mean, just for the in terms of just like a level of muscularity, he's shorter. But, you know, he's probably getting up there close, at least in terms of like actual like weight on the scale to Samson, um, especially not at this far off in height either. I don't think. Um, I mean, let, let's see when they stand up here. No more than two inches. Hunter's what, 5'9? Samson's 5'10? That's what you can find on the internet. If, if that's actually what they are in real life. Yeah, I, I, sure. I, it's even more reliable to go on side by side on stage. Yeah. Like you said, how far, how different are they? I mean, I, it looks like Samson's further back, but Hunter just has like a really big head. Hunter's crouching here in this picture. Just go, that, go to like, let it play till they're standing. Well, standing. Yeah, Samson's definitely taller. But by how much? Mm, I don't think a whole big bunch. And I mean, when you look at it, they're they're basically standing right even where they are like on the line there. You can see the line for the stage right by their feet. So they're really standing just about even, but just Hunter just looks so much bigger. Like he just looks like a bigger human in general. Like structurally that that probably really isn't the case and i think i think samson is one of those guys that maybe looks better on stage you know because some guys like phil heath always looked better on stage than off season like it wasn't really as impressive in yeah, the off season phil sucked, on, phil sucked off season yeah posing. yeah and like someone like roly winkler he was impressive on stage and off but like even his off season look was like massively impressive where most guys can't say that i would say hunter's off-season look is very impressive. Um, what do you think about the waist, though? Like, top comment here is Hunter's losing his waist. I say it is Not what it is. Waist, it, yeah, it is what it is. At this point, in this, this stage in the game? I mean, no. I don't... He, he doesn't have the smallest waist in general, so if he has to, like, make it a little bigger in order to put on size, I don't really see that as a detriment because it was never a strong point. Anyway, it's not like he's losing a strong point, and that, I don't even think he's like making a uh, a weak point weaker. I think it'll come back yeah. w once he cuts down and starts practicing the vacuum again and things, which he has been doing. Yeah, I don't think there's much difference between him and Dota. Well, yeah, now now Dota pulls a vacuum. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, a lot of people. I think most of the comments are going to be about his waist, and it's just. Like like we said, it is what it is. It's part par for the course when you're when you're growing. Everything grows. But I mean, look at Hunter's progress everywhere else. The back, the arms, the the legs, especially. I noticed the legs a lot. I think they do hit a back shot at one point. Yeah, I don't think it was in that video. Um Yeah. There it is. There. Oh, they're wearing their pants. Did you see how did you see Hunter's skinny jeans? You see those painted on they're painted on you know they're already so tight around his calves i'm just wondering how he got them past the quads two <clears throat> probably took four people <clears throat> i apologize probably took four people to stretch them on yeah it's just it's just crazy you see the little guy at the end there yeah yeah they put him next to the uh the amateurs which is Interesting, because Fuad was like... That's, that's my uncle. He's my uncle. You're lying. Yeah. No, he he tried to get in front of Samson there at one point. That's funny. That there were so funny. many different... I know I don't want to get into a rabbit hole, but there were so many different categories in the the amateur ranks. And no. the, the, the overall definitely wasn't the best of them. Yeah, like that guy. That guy shouldn't have been in the top four of the amateurs. There was a few that were pretty good. The guy beside the guy that you can see, he won. Yeah, he, I, he, he was he was pretty decent. I have to say. Sure, sure. Yeah, I, I I see what you're saying. Like it really does put things into perspective when you put amateurs next to top. All both of these guys have been top five before. Yeah, you top don't six. you don't realize, especially when you see these guys in real life. Like we, I've seen a few bodybuilders. Mm -hmm. And they, they look massive, yeah. you know, and then you see some pictures of them on stage and it's like, you, you have to put this in perspective of how big 
these guys really are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's cra it's crazy, yeah. I mean, imagine them talking backstage. Geez, Hunter, I work out just like you. I take all the stuff you do. Am I as good as you? Hunter, well, I've never seen you with your top off, but no. I, he it's, just knows. You're not as good. It's just yeah, levels. Yeah. Uh, like you said, I think most of these guys could even take the same things, train the same way, eat the same amount of meals or whatever, and just Doesn't not matter. look that way. Yeah. It's just. Guys used to follow Arnold to the T. Mm -hmm. Guys used to do everything Arnold did. Franco Colombo did everything opposite. Franco looked more like Arnold than any of them. Yeah. So different paths. Um, do you think what do you think of Hunter's progress in general? Are you I like you, it. What's your opinion of Hunter? Because a lot of people are just like, you know, he's he's just there. A lot of people think, are just No, I, I think he's getting better. Do you think getting... he'll be inside that inside that top six again? Yeah. Yeah. I think he's pushing for an even higher spot this year. I think that too, but a lot of people just don't like him, you know, for whatever reason. They think it's his physique is not that impressive. He placed in front of Nick Walker that one time, got a lot of hate there. The last name is always subject to controversy, of course. So a lot of people just don't like him. And I, and I always thought his physique was like mid in terms of like Olympia level athletes. I was like, uh, I don't see what all the hype is when you have other guys at the Olympia level that, in my opinion, look better. But now I think he's like bringing up his weak points and he's like a good well rounder. And I think I, I was really impressed with these offseason updates and I was defending him about the waist. I was like, I don't really care. I just want to see him bigger and improved. Even if the waist gets slightly bigger, if everything else gets doubly bigger, then it won't matter. And it's off season. For sure. For sure. Um, no, I, I think that the placing that he got over Nick, it was, I don't know if you want to call it a gift. Yeah. If you talked to me back then, I would have said, oh, Nick was robbed. Nick was robbed. Nick wasn't a hundred percent. They had just seen Nick at 100% at the Arnold, and this was a less Nick, so they dinged mm -hmm. him for that. Yeah. Now, as far as Hunter's placings are concerned, he got a worse placing the next year, so that kind of writes that all off, does it not? Yeah, because he was, what, 7th in 2022? And he, then... Seventh. He placed under Andrew Jack, did he not? Yeah. Or no, no, no. No, he not that year. He, he, he beat Jack, and it was controversial. Yes, I think right. I think that is correct. I, yeah. I think so too. Jack really dropped the ball in the finals. Now, as oh, far as Hunter Labrada's name is concerned, yeah, you're. If you took his name out, you would have to take his name out of the situation right from the get go. And I, this is my opinion, I would be willing to bet he wouldn't be as high as he is right now. I think his name helps him. I. I think so too. I don't think, and I don't think that's, you know, that's just, certain people just have certain advantages. It is what it is. But yeah, I would agree. Like with the last name Labrada, it just, at the very minimum, people have more attention on you. You know, the yes. people are paying more attention to you, I guess. Sergio like, Oliva, same thing. Exactly. They were, they were neck and neck, those guys. And it is, it has to do with, you know, they get the ball thrown to them. They get the ball. It has to do with, I think uh, Sergio got tackled. Yeah, yeah, I, I think, think he got tackled. But they'll they'll keep throwing them the ball if they're that, the name, because people are like you said, people are interested. Yeah, I, I think I think that's I think that's fair. You know, they're throwing the ball, but it's up to them as to what to do with it next. And I think Hunt like Hunter is running with it. Yeah, I, I think Hunter's improving a lot, doing very good. I think he just turn 30 if i'm not mistaken or is not not that old at all no no um, he's young young buck i think samson's actually surprisingly old um i thought so too but i looked up his birthday and it's really not what you think it is he's like 30, i thought he was 30 36 37 i'm getting down to the bottom of this um i know andrew hey, jacked is older surprise you sure yeah i think Crezo is a little younger than i thought Samson Dowda birthday unknown. I like it. you can interview him, but you can't ask a, a basic question. Age essentially sports.com says 32. He was born in 92. But that 
I don't yeah. Think, I don't think so. March 11th, 1992. Samson Dada, does he have a Wikipedia page? No, no. It says 32. That sounds a bit young. That certainly sounds a bit younger than he should be. This, another website confirms, but you know, they all share different things. 92. He's 92? He was born in 92. Oh. I was going to say, he'd be all wrinkled look, look, up by now. Looks pretty good for 92. Bony old behind, bony old behind, bony old behind. Yeah, everything I'm seeing says 32, which I, I don't know. Maybe just because the British people age differently. I thought I'd seen 36. I think that may be yeah. what Andrew Jack is. They age them by stones, don't they? I'm 30 stone today. No, 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 no. That's the weight, which makes even less sense. Well, no, a stone's about seven pounds. Well, That's every stone pound. every stone weighs different. No, no, no. Andrew Jack, like this foot. says... Every foot's different. Every foot's different. Yeah. Hey, I'll give you that one, too. Um, Andrew Jack is 39. Oh, really? Born in 85. Oh, and Brandon Curry, I think we were talking about him, 41. Yes. 41? Oh, yep. I am older than Brandon Curry. Big ah. Rami, 39. Yeah. And I thought Hottie was older. He's only 36. Hottie's I thought he not was... that old. Yeah, yeah, Hottie's not that old. He just looks older. It's the... I did that video with all the ages. Yeah. Of all the... And it was very interesting. You go from Arnold, and you can make a diagonal line. Didn't I send you that picture before on Instagram? Mm -hmm. There's no a diagonal line, Arnold's age from 22 or whatever it was to 28. And then Lee Haney was a little bit younger, 24 to, to 30. Yeah. And then Dorian Yates was a little bit older. Dorian's line goes up. So their diagonal lines go up, up like stairs. And then Ronnie Coleman, he was a little older again. And he went to 40, 41 as Olympia champion. Yeah. So those those four champions from Arnold to Lee to Dorian to Ronnie Coleman, all their ages go consistently up, up, up. So Mr. Olympia champions are getting older. No, age doesn't matter because Chris Dickerson was 82 champion, 43 years of age. And then 2018, it happens again with a 43 year old. And Derek Lunsford's a young Buckingham. That's true. That's true. So age age is the only thing that's inconsistent with the Mr. Olympia title, I think. You should do one by race. Uh, it goes back and forth with a lot of them, I think. I think Isn't because it? there's always Never like... Consistent. Yeah, there's always a big... Like, everyone wants to make it uh, a race issue, which I think is perfectly fine. Because there are genetic differences between different races, and I think that is fascinating. Like, you can have a guy like um, Lee Haney, very round, very bubbly. You can have a guy like Dorian Yates, the opposite, but can get very dry. And then you have sometimes uh, a Phil Heath type, which kind of has the best of both worlds. But it's interesting. I, I'd be if you took all the pro show winners, I'd be interested to see. Well, not only where the pro shows take place, but who's traveling to where to win these shows as well. I, I think it has less to do with that nowadays because we all evolved a certain way, living in certain areas, regions of the mm -hmm. world. Yeah. I'm I'm like, I'm a Heinz 57 me, so I don't care. You know what I mean? Yeah. Some people take it personally, and I get that. Yeah, they I do. Got, <laughs> I got like seven different races in me, so. And uh, a Nordic like uh, Northern European, mm -hmm. those people had to deal with a lot of hills and mountains and cold, things of that nature, as opposed to somebody living in the plains. So obviously they're going to be genetically created different, but it's the future. We all eat the same thing. We all train the same mm -hmm. way. And that's why everybody looks the same. So it has less to do with that. I think nowadays you'll still see some differences you know, Hattie, Hattie Shoop and guys like that are just as peeled mm -hmm. as can be because they've always lived in a warm climate, whereas, like I said, Northern Europeans live in the cold. They're going to have to store fat no matter what. Their genetics mm -hmm. store fat for sure. Had to have. So I'll still be on those uh, on your post for Fan Requested Friday requesting this video. Every Friday. Which one? 
Um, I'll have to. I'll have to. Oh, I thought you had a specific video you were saying. Yeah, but I, I need to articulate it to just every Mister, every Mister Olympia, every Mister Olympia's genetic makeup. So I need you to become a geneticist and do this video for me for a fan requested Friday. Can't. Some people won't tell you. It's like they, like I said, they get touchy about True. it, and that's that's society makes it that way. I think. I I would agree. So let's move on from this uh, this guest posing, and let's get into the top six. So there were only six guys. Um, I think there was the score sheet actually, which I'll put up so we can get a a glance of them. Not on bodybuilders without borders. Hmm. Okay. Well, I thought he did post a. Uh, I thought he did post a score sheet. That's Could tough. Oh, I thought it was the pinned one. No. The 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 six the six guys, it would be on. Uh, are you on bodybuilders with the borders? What yeah. who was the best bodybuilder? That's a really good one too. My favorite. What one. about the six? The top six. Um, I was less upset that there was six guys because there was a top two. If there's no top two, I don't care how many guys there is in the show. It sucks. Who cares? Like Crizo, the M Pro, the M Pro. I, I'm gonna upset some people, but the M Pro Classic sucked. They already put his name on the trophy. Come on, did they? Andrea really? Presti, really? Wow. No, they probably did though. Yeah, I would imagine. Um, but yeah, they had. Uh, they what? did. They did at the Masters at the 1994 Masters. They put Lou Ferrigno's name on the. On the <laughs> they did. They re They did. I didn't know that. Um, yeah. yeah, you had Presti at the Impro. You had those two um, Brazilian guys, <laughs> or are they? The heck's going on your screen? Did you see that? What was by? that? What was that? I did. I did. I don't know. You did had... that, and balloons go by. <laughs> they had the you, you uh... flip, flip them the bird. Flip them the bird. It's funny how one of our fingers is X-rated and the other ones aren't. You flip them the bird, it'll probably do something. I don't know. Maybe it's because I said Brazilian. Oh, you're scared to flip the bird, eh? Because it means a swear word. It's yeah, funny. I think, I think maybe Thumbs I said... up's good. Don't don't show the middle one. Oh, that's no. bad. Maybe I said... Maybe it thought I said birthday. But it's not doing it now. So I don't know. That's interesting. But yeah, at the Embro Classic, you had Andrea Presti. Those two Spanish or maybe they're Brazil oh, Brazilian guys. Yeah. They're, they're both new pros. There was a bald guy there. I forget his name. Wellington. Something Wellington. Oh, was Wellington there? That's the bald guy. Buff Wellington? I thought he was Brazilian. He is, but he wasn't he wasn't the uh one of the ones I, I was talking about. The no, there's another bald guy. I can't think of his name. Yeah, I don't think Wellington was at the Empro. Oh yes he was. Look at that. Huh. Jeez Louise. See, I forget. I got a photographic memory, but I fell in my head years ago and some people, I think the scientific consensus is uh, photographic memory doesn't exist anymore. Or doesn't exist anymore. They don't believe it exists anymore. It's just because they forget. Now nobody has it anymore. Mm, yeah. All right. So, in this six... Is, this guy, yeah, I remember this guy. Yeah, d technically didn't place. They, they only brought out the top five, which I say, just make it a top six anyway. But I mean, hey, top five is top five. So if you want to leave one guy backstage, I mean, I guess it is what it is. Um, but yeah, Harry Harris was sixth at the inaugural Detroit Pro. What do you think about this? Oh, guy? this is Harry Harris. That's right. Yes, yes. I mean, no wonder I recognize him. Shredded, tall. It's just tall is only going to be an advantage once you start filling out that frame. And I think he just needs a little more. That's all I can really say about him. He brought great condition for sure. That's why I like the show because everybody was in shape, and the lighting helped too. Even Gabriel didn't yeah. look. No, the lighting was. It, it made it, all the Mayan. It looked. It made everyone look like they were doing a a photo shoot. Like if you just like show me these That's pictures. Me. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, now we talked about how the Olympia chooses big stages. I think one time and like it's just hard to light bigger stages 
And also they they put up LED screens in the background. But Fuad had a smaller, more intimate stage, black backdrop, and actually took the time to light it properly. You know, sh was shopping around basically for good venues in in the area. Yeah. Well, that's good. And he let uh, Gilko was there and they weren't just taking the videos, but I don't know if you watched the actual live stream. It was far yeah, and away yeah. the best live stream I've ever seen. For bodybuilding, at least. Yeah, um, it was like 30, 30 bucks or something like that. It was 30 bucks. And for one class, for one pro class, I guess, um, it was, I thought that was a little steep, but then I saw how good it actually was. And I was a little more okay with it. Like, I think, and like I think. You have your 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 amount of money that you wanted to pay, and then you knew you did, and then you see Samson and Hunter come out, and you know, I'll give them another couple of bucks. Uh, exactly. Oh, the lighting yeah. was good. Yeah. Well, it was good lighting. And yeah. The, the the lighting is a separate issue, in my opinion. The backdrop, the crazy lights, that has nothing to do with ads. Look at the 2021 Olympia where Bumstead's doing his posing routine, and you cannot see him. It, yeah, they're not even it's playing ads. It's crazy things spinning around. Like somebody should be drug out into the street and shot for that. I think he may like have just no, posted a recent. Video I get the that. ads. I get it. They, they need to have ads, but that's not ads. Yeah, they weren't during the posing routines, which in most of the comparisons, they weren't even playing ads and they were just still ads anyway. They could have easily made banners, physical banners. And even if you still put physical banners in the background, it's going to distract less than an LED yes. banner in the background. Yeah. You know what they should do? Have a mascot run out in between rounds. You remember those guys. The Michelin Man? Come on. And then hold a banner like, here I am for hostile. Well, no. Or if you want a hostile, get the hostile. Invent a hostile man. It's the hostile man. That'd, right? be, that'd be Sam Sulik, I guess. Yes, yes. Remember the hamburger helper glove? Do, 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 do. I love me some hamburger helper. That, uh, you don't remember the hamburger helper glove? Just from the box. <laughs> <laughs> Used to do the commercials. Nothing says loving like my chocolatey chip cookies. Woohoo! Oh, that's a different guy. Never mind. I think that's Pillsbury Doughboy. Pillsbury yeah, Doughboy. Yeah, yeah, I was just joking. All right. Um, Harry Harris, anything to say other than great condition? I think this reflects the show. This reflects the show. This is a last place. There was no stragglers. Remember that Giovanni guy at the? I forget which event it was. The Italy, Italy Pro, the one that's uh, Nathan yes. Yasha one. Yes, that guy shouldn't. There's guys that shouldn't be on stage. You did a video on that. No, well, not on him specifically, but like the worst condition bodybuilders. Did I put him in that? I think so. I think well, so. Well, people people pushed for him versus Dave Palumbo over That's and over That's the comparison. Again. Yeah, it wasn't. I finally it, yeah. did it. You're I right. I finally did it for them. And they really wanted to see that one. As Pite. Giovanni as Pite. I watched it all. I thought it was entertaining. They should put them in a wind tunnel. If you can see any flapping skin or anything like that, no, you shouldn't be on stage. Unless you're Masters. But there was that that reflects the show. A guy like that, and this guy took sixth or fifth. Yeah, fifth, sixth. Harry took sixth. Gabriel. Uh, yeah, and then Gabriel took Harry. fifth. He was rounding out that top five. Yeah, they they made poor Harry Harris walk off stage. I know. I know. What do you think about? You think they should have just made a top six or top five is top five if you didn't make it? Well, I, at Vancouver, I think they brought that sixth place guy into the pack there at the end. Remember that big tall guy, the Vancouver. I don't remember. Guys. I do remember it being a small show. I don't remember that guy specifically. The, the great big guy, like six foot two or something, or three or even taller. Yeah, poor Harry. That's uh, Ron Harris's brother. No, it's not. No, of course I'm lying. No, it's not. Are you uh, spreading misinformation on my channel? No, when I lie, I tell you I'm lying right away, and I'm lying. It's not his brother. And that guy was not my uncle. Maybe, maybe a cousin of Ron Harris. He did no, leave. No, he, Ron said no relation. I heard him say that on a, on his video. Long lost cousin of Ron We Harris. were watching them yesterday together. I didn't watch all of it. No, me neither. What a shame. Well, I guess we're not real viewers, I guess. Real fans of Ron well, Harris. Well, no, we're going in to support him. I see you. I see you in his live streams 
more than I saw EP09 on one of them, but I see you on every single one. I, I, if, go even on. if I'm busy, if he's alive, I go <laughs> and at least click on it and I comment just to show him some love. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next athlete, fifth, Gabriel Greppi. And I did, that's how everyone else is pronouncing it. Um, I'm, so I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. Um, this guy, I thought he was arguably getting sixth after I watched because he was sweating. He was breathing through his stomach a lot and his stomach was already a bit, his waistline's a bit thicker. Um, very top heavy, just structurally, even though his legs are good, he just looks. Bottom out great. Yeah. It's just because his waist is so wide. He looks top heavy from, from the get go. I think it was a size thing. He was just a little wider in the in the comparisons, and I think by default they just okay, he's bigger. Yeah. But I I did hear Fua talking very like complimentary about him. Maybe mm. they know him. Maybe they're his friend. I don't know. Could that affect? I guess they're not judging it. Yeah, I think he's a Canadian. I mean, maybe Fua give give one of the judges a little elbow and looked up at him. Yeah, yeah. see Gabriel up there. That, huh? Paul, Paul from Bro Chat, Paul Lozon, because I'm pretty sure he was a judge on here. Tyler oh, yeah? Mannion was there too. Yeah, Tyler Mannion. He was, was there, there, but he didn't judge, did he? Paul. Was I thought they announced. Maybe not, because I can see Fua doing both. Um, I thought they announced the judges, and I didn't think they said Tyler Mannion. Tyler Mannion was on the score sheet. Oh, okay, sorry, I'm wrong. <clears throat> Let me double check that. I I'm pretty sure he was. Um, I'm trying to make videos too while I'm watching the event. Yeah, I'm trying to take screenshots really fast. <laughs> the yes. heck of a thing. Tyler Mannion's name is on the score sheet. And there yes. you go. And I thought, you know, you know, unique voice. And I was listening to it just a little bit because I was on stream and I couldn't play the audio because they were playing music. But when I did listen to it, the amateur class, he was calling most of the names and the poses. Um, I don't think Steve was there, Steve Weinberger, but I do believe um, Tyler was... Head judge. Get a big Steve there. Keep Tyler in line. Yeah, show show the young gun how it's done. You know, Steve was on a interview recently. And he doesn't do too many of those. He was He's all, done a few. I remember the only big one I remember him doing was on Generation Iron after the 2018 Olympia. Which I've seen course, I've seen podcasts with him, so maybe not interviews. Yeah, this one, I mean, it was <clears> technically <throat> on a podcast interview, but I don't see too many of them. To be honest, he was, I don't on see him. James. he was, and I remember that one. Um, yeah, but he's like done two in the past two months or something like that, which is new record. Yeah, maybe usually, lucky that I clicked on that one. Yeah, usually he's kind of behind behind the scenes, really. You know, you'll hear him at the Olympia, but you never see him talk or anything after. Usually, sometimes like the actual <laughs> NPC channel will stop him backstage and like have him make yeah. a few comments, but yeah. that's that's really he's a personal about guy, I think. Yeah, he does his job. He does his job. He's not a. He doesn't like to go in front and talk. And you do know who Bev Francis is, right? Yes, yes. Okay. And I knew Bev Francis before I knew him. I think everyone did. Did is yeah. okay. Not well. To be a lot rude. of people don't know female bodybuilding. Not to be rude. Well, everyone everyone knows powerhouse gyms. You know, and that's that's the chain that Steve and Bev co own. Correct me if I'm wrong. Bev's gym. Bev's gym, which is like big gym. And fans. don't they don't they own like the like franchising rights or whatever to all powerhouse gyms? Probably. Probably. That's that's what I thought. I don't know, but they are they do other things just besides Steve judging and Bev being oh, a, yeah. an old school female bodybuilder. You know, they, they have she was like, an uncrowned uncrowned Miss Olympia. They have a lot going on, you know, in terms of the actual business side of things. And like not to be rude, but I've seen pictures of Steve back in the day. Big dude. But is he only the Mr. Olympia judge because he got his foot in the door with Bev Francis and kind of worked his way up? He's got a great it, eye. Yeah. I mean, but there are other people that have a lot of, you know, good eyes. Well, no, they're not Bev Francis's husband. husband. That's true. That's true. No, he's got a good eye. When he you certainly find somebody does. With a good eye and then they compete, they have what you call experience and it's hard to beat him when he now he's got the good eye and he has experience yeah now we just have to wait for his eyes to to go on him and then <laughs> and then tyler's uh, no, probably not tyler he's probably just going to be president of nbc 
IFBB, probably still like a head judge at smaller shows and like on the panel at the Olympia. But I, I see him just taking over Jim Mannion's role, which isn't a judging role, at least at this point in his career. Jim or JM? Jim. Jim. Yeah, so I think this guy should have got sixth. I mean, condition, like you said, he was he carries a lot of size for being the shortest guy on the it I was, believe he was, was the shortest yeah. guy on the stage. I mean it was it was the size thing, I think the thickness. Yeah, the overall thickness. Um we've got everyone's favorite up next. Um in fourth, actually. Justin Rodriguez, he wasn't third. Most people had him in third in their predictions just because, well, he's still a bigger name. We're still waiting for that, um, that 2022 package. But yet again, um, disappointed and placed fourth this time around. I mean, what haven't we said about Justin? Mark, can you think of anything? I heard you dissing my man Justin and his delts there on your live stream. Oh, look at those well, delts. I mean, let me go back. Just full of oil. Yes, there, there, right there is where you paused it. I it mean, was you and Kenson. You and Kenson were doing a video, weren't you? It was from the Arnold, wasn't it? It was the Arnold Brazil Review Detroit Pro. Preview. That was a good podcast. I watched that. I watched that podcast. Well, thank you. Thank you guys I... were very articulate. We try to be. We try to be. You guys were very professional and articulate. A lot better than this crowd right here. Well, yeah, I'm a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, you're absolutely fine. I mean, you're. I am a small percent. <laughs> you're hitting the nail on the head with Justin's delts here. Um, and it's well, good. Yeah, but I mean, honestly, I can maybe even look past the stomach issue. To me, I don't know because the stomach is like lumpy, and you know, a lot of people say, "Oh, that's just genetics." People just have lumps. Under the skin, but a lot of people are like, no, this is uh, <laughs> that's Not what like Greg. That. That's what Greg Doucette says. He says, I did. I don't use GH or insulin in my stomach. I use. It's just when you get so lean, the bumps come right. out. I I remember him saying that all the time. He's like, I don't do GH or in my stomach. I I. It's just so lean. That's just genetically how I am. He said he could be a woman. He's gonna be a woman. So I, I, got, I got I got nice lips. He says I could be a woman. Oh yeah, uh, sometimes it, that, was, that was that video that everybody bashed him over. Yeah, talking about the women's bikini bottoms. Yeah, and then he came out with another video with like his girlfriend off in on the other side of the room or whatever. Not in the video. They, they broke up. No, not that girlfriend. Another, he has a new girlfriend. Maybe not girlfriend, but there was definitely a woman in close proximity with Greg, which automatically means they are in a relationship. And uh. She was like off to the side. She, she was very close just based on how her volume level, but <clears throat> she, they were, funny. he was like commenting on like breaking down that video. And now he's no longer allowed to judge, which is, which is interesting. Well, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. You can't, go, that's, that's go ahead. Enjoy a peek if you want. But I, I mean, for goodness sakes, even it if it's, tr even if it's true, you can't say yeah. it, Greg, you can't keep say the truth. No. But I mean, I he was right. a little bit, Tipsy? Maybe he was on something. I don't yeah, know. We'll say said tipsy. he had a cold. Said he had a cold, but I don't know. Well, the, the thing of it is, a guy like Greg who said he's 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 a millionaire. Multi-millionaire, yeah. He's buying so like he, Lambos. He can, he, can, he can afford to have friends that are females hanging around. That's what the know? rumor was. That's what, that's what the Especially rumor was. Especially if he was. just broke up with a girl that he's been with for years, and I'm sure he's heartbroken. Yeah. So he... And all the comments are the same, like, single Greg is a menace. Single Greg has no filters. Greg, at this point, just doesn't care, you know? Well, you got to watch yourself. He yeah. can get taken like that from some pretty face. It's true. Taken for all he's worth. It's true. It's and true. And I wouldn't feel sorry for him. Well. People, people feel sorry for these millionaires getting taken. It's like, eh, I don't feel sorry for a millionaire. Yeah, he should be been, a little more dubious. Sign a prenup. He, 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 went, he wanted to be with her. That's what it costs. Yeah. Exactly. Everyone pays. Everyone pays. <laughs> Everybody's got a price for the million dollar man. <laughs> True. Um, so back to Justin. Is uh I mean, we're gonna have this conversation every time we see him, which unfortunately is a lot. And I don't say unfortunately because I don't like seeing him. I just wish yeah, right. it was on better terms. 
you know. I like him too. I just need he needs to take some time off. You know, I actually have a hot take in this uh, recap that's coming out. Maybe not a hot take. Um, recap coming out today. Um, I actually don't think, and I think you opened my eyes to this. Time off is not going to help him. I think the two shows in 2022 were a fluke. This is just what he is. What do you, what do you think about that? This is just like, like you said, uh, like in regards to a King Williams, we were never supposed to see the best version of a King Williams because that's such an outlier that all of his other, you know, that's an outlier up here and all of his other shows are all of his other More packages like are done Patrick there. Patrick Moore. Yeah. Yeah. That's another good example. Um, because Justin is consistent, but like it's consistent to packages like this. I would say this is like good for what he's usually been bringing. The waist is getting wider, and I think that's more indicative of like his age more than anything. Can, can you just hold on for one second? Yeah. Justin Rodriguez. Specifically, I was like, Justin is probably just as good as what we've been seeing and not as good as his 2022 packages. Would you concur or would you disagree? Yo, oh, yeah. No, baby. His muscles and things of that nature, they're, they, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just the, the only one thing is the midsection. I mean, muscles, he is like, he doesn't have actual delts. Like his back looks great. His back is still good. Honestly, I think it may have even been beaten Martin's hot take. I really am a fan of Justin's back in the way, like, he has that perfect V-shape going on um, from the back. But, like, from the front, it's just, he gets derailed from the midsection. His legs are maybe a little down in size, especially one of them. They're asymmetrical. And, of course, like, uh, lack of triceps, maybe suspect triceps, and definitely suspect delts. Triceps do look a little weak there in a couple of shots. Yeah, I mean, you can really tell when he hits the side tricep. It's like a bicep, delt, and then the, the tricep just, like, falls off. Um, just getting into it here. Yeah. I That's mean, like, he, he'd beat Martin on size, but not condition. Yeah, and Martin didn't have any flaws, like... No one had any flaws, like, in my opinion, Justin's midsection or delts. Um, some of the one, one guy right here says, uh, best I've seen Justin's midsection in a while. Would you, would you agree with that? <laughs> I mean, define he looked decent. He looked decent at the Arnold. He looked okay. Him and him and Akeem Williams, they both came in like, man, we're they look okay. I think that was a, I think the Arnold specifically was a peaking issue. He looked flat, I think. I think going back and looking at the pictures so I can but put them in the... to the time before that though. When, when, oh, when for sure. We, we just seen him compete before that and he was just, uh, the Legion he, was it. He did the 20, 20 then? he did the 2023 Legion. Yeah. And yeah. then I think also he may have jumped into the New York pro because that's his home turf. He likes to do that show. Um, if he not, he wanted to win the New York came, Close in like what 2020, 2021, if it wasn't for like Nick Walker and Ian Valier and John Delarosa. He, he won a, a show, he won a pro show. It was, I want to say, it was so, like one of the more obscure ones, like maybe Puerto Rico one year. No, the Indy. Do you did he win did he one win? year? I think he won the Indy. Because I know he he used to do that show a lot as well, but I don't know if pretty he sure pretty sure he won the indie. You um, check your little cheat sheet and find out. You let us know if I'm correct the, or if I'm internet? incorrect. Um, almost won the Boston Pro, of course. Yes, placed second at Boston. Beat a lot of guys. He did win indie in 2021. Yes, right yes. again. It's first time for everything, I guess. Well, no, it says right here on my screen because i'm looking at his complete bodybuilding history oh really no i'm just joking that i don't know if you mind. i don't know if you pull up notes no no, no I... not not right now not at this time okay i'm looking at justin do some flexes and just so... put a mirror put mirrors on your if you're doing a podcast put mirrors there so you can see if people are cheating for real um where does 
I think the conversation can no longer be where does Justin go from here? And just it's just should be like it is what it is. Justin's you don't think the time you don't think the time off is gonna help him. It would help him some, but would it help him get back to what was seen in 2022? I, I kind of doubt it. 2020, he was good too. Yeah. O. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. He got eighth. He got eighth at the O. Tenth. I I just I think now, now that he has issues, uh, for lack of a better term. I mean, look at the leg discrepancy. He is holding one back, but you just saw the, the other pose. He always like he is tilting this one vastly. Um, but you can just you know, you, there's a there's a size quad sweep. Quad yeah. sweeps way off. This one honestly looks like something has happened to it. Um it just happens to age. My my leg, I don't have a whole lot of muscle, but I even I can tell my legs like half the size. I don't know because it looks like it like is a different shape even. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not even just smaller and it's the same shape. It's a different shape. Yeah. Nerve nerve damage, all kinds of things can contribute into that. For sure. These um, guys are lifting a lot of weight. So let's say I saw him actually doing four four oh five for like reps on his Instagram before this. Crazy. Um so do you think do you think Justin's twenty twenty two package can return or no. No, no. Do you think it's just even like, even no. Akeem Williams? Neither of them guys are coming back to their prime. Nathan Diasher, guys like that. They're yeah, yeah. Do you think um, Justin should take time off to kind of regroup at least to some yeah. prior form? Yeah, so he can retire looking good. Do you think you know, he should retire soon? How old is he? I think he should. Yeah. All the comments I see, I've I've seen, are they're just all like. Retire, retire, bro. It's over. Hanging up, things like that. I mean, if you can keep placing top five at a lot of these pro shows, I don't really see why you <clears> should. Um, what's a top five when you're when you've been competing that long? There's that, but I don't, I don't know. You know, he's he's a recognizable name for sure, but it's weird because everyone recognizes him as not a threat anymore. It's his job. It is. And he's like 36 or something. He Is he 30, 36? I, I, I want to say 36. 36. Almost thought he'd be a little older than that. He's got one of them distinguished faces that he was like 40 years old when he was 20. <laughs> he was 20 and he looked like a 40-year-old yeah, man. Yeah, looks, looks a little tough, I would say. I would say. Um, I wouldn't want to get into a fist fight with him. Certainly not. Nor Max Charles. Okay, There are a lot of guys. Or uh, Charles Griffin. Charles. No, he looks. Right. What did you call him? You call him a homicide? No, it was one. I think someone in the comments, your comment section, said he looks like a homicidal maniac. Who does uh, Justin? No, 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 no. Maybe a little. Uh, Charles Griffin, because he like he Charles, like Charles Griffin. He gets the death face really bad, and like his eyes, they're like bulging out of his head. He, he looks like he cries he, too. He cries. Yeah, he said he cries. He says it's okay to cry. He's like, if you make fun of me for crying, you're going to get beat up by a great big man that's crying. That's crying. Um, he says. <laughs> I don't see Justin's age anywhere. Let's say the age I just this second made up being 36. Uh, Wait, 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 wait. Born in 1987. Six years younger than me. So 37? I'm almost 43. 37 if he's had his birthday this year. So I think he is actually 36 because I don't think he's had his birthday this year. Maybe he has, maybe he hasn't. But I'm at least very close on the age. 37. Yeah. Um. So with that with that in mind, do you think you should take time off and like make one last hurrah or just like try to make yeah. one last hurrah? Yeah. Win another show. That's Win pushing another it. show. I got to be honest, that's pushing it. I don't know if he can do that. I mean, I think he can if he, you know, he's placed in third there. You got to pick the right show. Could he, could he have won the uh, Chicago last year? There's a couple of shows that they'll. Yeah, you know, maybe it's just all, it's all dependent on if Justin, what kind of Justin we see. And that's the thing. And that's why I think he, if he wants to, that's that's his only thing that he can do. Yeah. 
to shoot for. Unless he's, like I said, he's just doing it as a job. Just to collect a paycheck. He can still, he's big. He you know, he's a big. bodybuilder. He's, a, he's still a bodybuilder. If you threw a guy like me or you up there, they would they'd pull, they'd, us, pull us off the stage. Come on. Yeah. So, that's Justin. Let's get into the top three. Um, The, the guy just beating Justin was um Ron Gordon. Gordon. I mean, I remember this guy impressed me way back when. Yeah, he's been a pro for a while. I thought he was a newer pro, but no, he's been competing in pro shows for a couple nope. years now. Um, he competed against Hunter Labrada in Tampa. In a Tampa years ago. And yes. there was Dwayne Walker. Dwayne Walker and Gordon both looked great. Um, So, given your extensive knowledge of Ron Gordon's career, do you think. um? This is probably the best Ron Gordon ever. So far. People are going to say that about this show. Yeah, that's the thing with the it's lighting the and everything. The this is this is going to be everyone's best placing, regardless if they've competed yep. once or yep. many times. True. I mean, that they're, they're still saying that about Hattie Shupin at the Vancouver. And Ron Harris pointed that out, that the backdrop and everything was black and the perfect lighting so everybody's going to point to these versions get to get, get these get this on the olympia stage then we'll it, see everybody maybe it, pushing ronnie king coleman in a picture comparison will but never if happen. you don't do that then there's just no uh, it'll happen no the olympia is not going to give up oh, gonna... no 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 i thought you meant that somebody's going to be be able to beat ronnie Oh, yeah. I, I mean, eventually. If you keep running the scenario so many times, yeah, we'll eventually yeah. find another freak yes. like Ronnie. There's probably a, there's probably probably plenty of freaks out there that we just don't know about that never got bit by the bodybuilding bug. I, I think about that back like back in the 60s. Could you imagine the bodybuilders that didn't lift weights walking around and like people with good knowledge and eyes could go to the grocery store and pick out some bodybuilders? That mm -hmm. For sure. They, they have no idea. But as you get into the future, genetics take over. As people realize, yeah, I can do this. Yeah, what do you think of this comment right here? Think about classic physic, champ. Come on now. No, sir. No, no sir. People don't... Do people just forget about the weight cap? Like, even though Ron looks a bit lankier, and that is that was his major flaw, um, he's still much bigger than any, you know... And he's taller, but so he's allowed more weight, but he's not fitting into a classic weight cap. People will always say that when the, when a bodybuilder is either tall or aesthetic. Yeah, think think about classic. I, I like mean, he just beat Justin Rodriguez. Don't you need to give him some credit? Yeah, I think. I mean, he really has everything he needs, um, body part wise. I think everything is there, but um, the posing needs a little work. But he just needs more of everything. He just needs more now, overall size. Now, do you? This is a loaded question. Okay. Do you think he deserved most shredded? No. But I think they didn't want to double think up. That they they made sure that they didn't double up yeah. on winners? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you arguably yeah. could have given Justin the most muscular award, to be honest. And then Martin or Good Vito mm. the most. I didn't watch the posing routines. I think Vito won the most muscular and the most shredded. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Um I'd say most shredded for sure. Most muscular, maybe Justin, but I think if they wanted to go for that wow factor, which is part, a part of it, um, go with good veto. Um, but, you know, you can make an argument for even Martin because he's pretty complete too without looking like ugly like Justin. Most shredded you mean or most muscular? Most muscular. But he was pretty shredded too, but I think if he had brought the same thing that he did at finals at prejudging, maybe he could have made that argument, but good veto was shredded just like he was at Brazil, maybe a little less, but he had conditioning to spare there. But no, I don't think uh, Ron should have taken most shredded. I think he had a lot of details, um, but in terms of like most shredded, like he didn't showcase. And this is because of posing. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't like a single like striated glute. The the back Christmas tree isn't as there as like Good Vito's, for example. Um, but yeah, I think it was just that they didn't want to double up. I I think old Harry Harris was more shredded than Gordon. That's Actually, yeah. Honest, yeah, yeah. To not double up, but you still wanted to give it to somebody <clears throat> else, you could have given it to Harry. Whatever. I like yeah. Harry, or I like uh, Gordon, so I didn't. I, I do a lot too. I was impressed. I and that's just it. Bodybuilding fans, they need to kind of 
get real. Take a step back. Like everybody was get mad that Tonio Tonio lost. Uh, it's because everybody likes Tonio. I love Tonio. Yeah. See, you can see it objectively. So you can say, okay. But there's people that just so upset that Brandeo was being disrespectful and all. I don't care. If I'm a, if I'm a judge on the court, okay, so who won? Well, he was being disrespectful. He punched him. I don't care. Well, like, Tony O'Connor can do that. Yeah, I don't care about that stuff. You know what I mean? He only said that because he talked about the bumps on his bum. That was funny. Which, that was which funny. were definitely apparent if you've seen that video that I just did about Brandeo. They had some... Something going on in there. Well, I had someone in my comments talking about Tonio's delts because they're so round, they look suspect. I don't think they are suspect. I think he's just exactly like Dexter Jackson, and Dexter had those like 3D qualities to every single muscle group, and that's what it looks like in your delts. Um, but some people, you know, they'll, they'll find something to complain about. I mean, it's... Uh... You, I did, a, like, a, a, they finally put the pictures out from the Arnold, the yeah. South America. Yeah, and I did the side by side, and then I brought up an a Brandeo picture from the Arnold, and yeah. his glutes they didn't have that bump on it, and then even the other side mm. there was no bump, and he actually mm. the glutes looked more a little more striated. In Ohio or Brazil? In Ohio. Okay. In Ohio. Okay. Yeah. It looked it definitely looked, and then you could see the closer up ones. And he had some wrinkles issues on his lower back and his badonka donk. Mm. And that Can't can happen that. quick. That can happen quick. Yeah. He maybe ate a piece of cake or something after the Arnold, Ohio, thinking, ah, it's and not just gonna couldn't happen. get it off. Yep. Couldn't get it off. It it lingered. No. Am I saying that it's still enough for Tony O to win? Don't spoil that for me. I haven't watched it yet. I did plan on watching it because I made my own video. The final word was, I wasn't there, so I can't get upset. You know, I had someone in my comments, I think I told you about this, saying, because in the comments, I had made the video Dexter versus Hottie, right? And I was like, you know what? I think I I think I may change my mind. I don't know. Like I said, it could go either way. Maybe I think today, I, I think I may change my mind and go with Dexter because I initially had Hottie winning because I was like, well, Dexter wins plenty of mandatories, but maybe has less flaws because Hottie, Hottie's delts and so on. Um, but I was like, yeah, you know, maybe I do change my mind. And then someone was like, how how dare you stick to your word? Stick, you're a man of your word and you need to stick to it. I was like, relax. I, I think I said touch grass or something. When, when but close. Yeah, when, when it's close, you can't be getting too upset about this sport. Yeah, exactly. Like it's it's a subjective people, people thing. People should be able to disagree. and I should be able to disagree with mean, myself. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But I mean, there's there's obviously a point. This guy looks more aesthetic. He has better proportions. He's in better condition. He's bigger. The other guy's shorter, smaller, less shape, and he's soft. He, yes, I'll argue that. You know. Yeah. But, but when it's close, when there's so many different things, like Brando had the aesthetics, and then, uh, and then you can go back and say, well, William Bonac beat Cedric McMillan. That's and true. that's kind of the same comparison. The whole time I was doing the Tony O versus Brandeo, I'm thinking, this is Cedric McMillan. And the funny thing is, I have Cedric beaten Bonac. Beaten Bonac. Yeah. I, I, I certainly I, I, wouldn't go that far. Was it that? Oh, maybe there was another one. Cedric versus uh... Kai. Yeah, it was It was Bonac. It was yeah, Bonac. At, at an Arnold Australia or something like Arnold Australia, you're right. You know yeah. your stat. Yeah, uh, I'm just a. I'm excited to see Bonex return. Actually, I think I think I like Bonex. I like Bonex. He does have the potential to like make one last two raw. I would say hanging up after this year, or maybe if you're really feeling good, maybe next year, depending on how you look. But definitely keep that because I I'd love to see Bonex go out on top. I don't want to see him end his legacy like how he was. Like, what was his last Olympio? He got like ninth or something like that because he he just eked past Brandau, and I was like, Ugh, I I don't know about all that because Bonac had his waist was thicker, legs were down. That makes that look worse. Um, yeah, Brando got tenth. Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, I, so I'm I'm kind of cruel that way, but not really. I'm doing it because I have heart. I'd like to see these guys 
when they're in their 50s, 60s, looking like Lee Haney did, did, you know, still able to move around. The guys that push it all a little too far, like Coleman, you know, walking around on crutches. He's the king. He's the king. I get it. But I would like to see, and it, and it helps for the new crop as well. For sure. Coming in, like placings. So I, I, I disagree on that. I think Bonac should just call her quits. No. Now, well, Kenny, yes, of course. He's awesome. He's awesome. Yeah, I'm a Bonac fan, so I want to see him. In these lineup. I think, I think, I personally just want to see him. I want to be able to cover one him last. at his show one last time. One last time yeah. for me, for the I fans, Bonac. I, um, I just hate to see these guys lose to lower caliber bodybuilders. Like when Tyson was at his last, when he... When he when he was not now, but I mean when he re, before he retired, he was losing to these guys that he shouldn't be losing to. Yeah, That's sad to see. For Muhammad sure. Ali, same thing. He was getting beat by these fluffs, and the same thing will happen to Bonac, and it's going to be sad to see. But if you Maybe want to he, cover him, he'll come him back. That. He'll come back and win the Olympia, <laughs> oh, and he'll yeah. be and he'll be the on the Project Bodybuilding podcast. And I can't and wait for that. Say, Thank you very much. You believed in me, my man. Yes, you exactly. You know, if he brought back his 2017 package, I th this is maybe maybe a hot take. I think he could. I mean, it's not going to happen. But 2017 is like one of my favorite physiques of all time. 2017 William Bonac. Like I've never seen. He was really good when he lost too at the Arnold. Uh, 2022. 2019. Yes. Yeah. He was crisp. Neck and neck. Neck and neck. Very crisp. A little sharper than at the 2017. 2017, I think he was a little more big. Yeah, just full. Just full, full. completely. Yeah. Could have beat Rami. Yeah, because Rami was second that year. Bonac was, was second, third, third. Yeah. Yeah. No, I see not that. Not Bonac highest spot. No, second in 2019. But I don't yeah. know if I necessarily agree with that. I think Hottie should have been second at least. But in actuality, I probably would have put Hottie in first. Brandon in second, William in third. Well, it's Tuesday. Certainly is Tuesday. Um, next, I want to talk about Good Vito and just him specifically, just as an individual. What did you think of Good Vito from Brazil to Detroit? I think that he's so good everywhere that I noticed his when he'd pose, he'd be like <laughs> squatting, and then yeah, twists right. a lot, yeah. Till He's got to really sit still for at least a second. So we can see this perfection. Mm -hmm. But the fact that I am picking on that shows that there's really not a whole lot that I can pick out of his physique. Some well, people were saying he had holes in his quads. and It is I what it know. is. I think it. I, don't know. I mean, the quads, I don't know if they're necessarily like a synthol thing. And maybe some people just do have, it could be a slight tear as well. Things like that happen all the time. Like if you have a slight tear in your quad, you're not, you're not going to get fixed. Um, but um, it, it could be something like that. I think they're a lot more forgivable than um, Rami's dents. I think those are not only suspect but even worse yeah. by a large margin. Um, I think Good Vito's condition was slightly worse in Detroit, but yeah. Um, it's like he had conditioning to spare from the Arnold, so I'm not upset with that because he traded that for a little more fullness. I think he was a lot more full. Yeah, the paint, overall. The paint was bad. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then of course lighting on top of all these guys, overall much much better package um, than Brazil. Even though it, like just changed a couple percent, it made a lot of difference at least to me. I thought he was even better in Detroit. Would you concur? Well, yeah, like I said, or like you were saying, the lighting. It helps that, everyone. And, and the, 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 the tan, he had like mud tan on him down in Brazil. And you got to think, it's going to be hot. These guys are going to be sweating. It's going to be um, even harder. Now, in terms of what good Vito should do um, next, I've seen, I think, Ron, uh, you were in that, in the chat. I said, yes, I hope he shuts it down for this year. Because I think 2025, yeah. a, a qualification then is a given um, if he does his homework. And he could yeah. 
and he can actually do damage at the Olympia of that year. I don't think he's going to be as competitive this year. I think he has too many gaps at the Olympia level. Um, even if he did get his qualification, which he probably could if he keeps trying, although Absolutely. a lot of these shows are competitive. Um, do you think he should shut it down or keep trying? As a greedy, greedy fan, I'd like to see him keep on going and qualify, go to the Olympia. But as if I was him, yeah, it would be hard. But yeah, take take another little look. Look how good he looks from just the time he just took off. For sure, and these it are just his off. first two I don't shows. Like the, word, the word off. Yeah, no, but I mean, he he competed like a couple 20, years ago or last, last year. 2022. 2022. Yeah. Yeah. At some Paulo, whatever it was. So Paulo. Mm -hmm. And he was half, half of what he is now. For sure. For sure. Nowhere near the condition. I don't even go by that version because he was a little watery to keep the size, I think. Yeah. He wasn't yeah. peeled because he was peeled before that. And you, you use those versions against this and it's like, wow, so much bigger. Night and day difference. Um, I think... He has maybe close to the potential of what maybe a Nick Walker could do, where he, first year in 2020, he did the Chicago Pro, got fourth, which he looked good, mm -hmm. um, but then he took another year off, and then that's what everyone good. thinks was his pro, was his rookie season, but it actually wasn't. 2021 was not his rookie season, it was actually 2020, where he just did the Chicago Pro. Um, and then he did the, uh, in 2021, New York Pro, won that. New York. Arnold won that, and then top five at the right. Olympia. I think Good Vito has potential to do something similar to that. I would say maybe he could compete at the Arnold if he wants, get an easy qualification, and then actually be competitive at the uh, Olympia. He needs two things, um, chest and shoulders region, um, just more density and detail, kind of like a, a Derek Lunsford situation, what he needs, a um, little more pop, roundness, kind of everything in that region, and then more back. Really only in the rear double, though. Needs more thickness. I think he has a higher ceiling than Nick Walker. I want to see how the back comes up within a year. And because uh, Nick has a worse structure than him, maybe. Because Good Vito has size and structure and condition. Nick, Nick's a little taller, I think. Um, Good Vito just needs a little better completeness. Because Nick is pretty complete. Um, oh, right now, Nick's destroying him. But we're talking. I'm talking a ceiling. How far can you go with this? Yeah, Nick. Nick's pushing it. He's maybe he is. Yeah, yeah. Where good veto, good veto has room to get into that. But whereas I say that is because his midsection genetically is better. The better structure for sure. Now his back, Nick Walker's rear lat spread. It was kind of. Not the best when he, he first started. Either. Even his rear double wasn't that good. Like his back, he's made yeah. an incredible back transformation. Yeah. Totally. I always liked his rear double. And I, I, I always like Vito's rear lat. People kind of criticize it because he doesn't he doesn't open up, but he Phil Heath's it. He flexes his back. Yeah. I think some and added thickness as... there would do him some yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, if see, yeah. If he thickened up the traps a little bit, the erectors, and, you know, did, just didn't look a little flimsy back here, this would be even better. Because he has the width and the fullness top to bottom for the lats. Um, I just want to see it pop a bit more. And the same thing would help him in the rear double. Yeah, his rear double's kind of a, a worse Shallow. situation. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, but then, then again, that... Nick Walker's got some bad poses, too. Front lat. Front lat? He's he's working on it. Is he? Yes. Is yes, he, he really? Is. Yes. Yes, he is. I would like to see a good one on stage. Yeah, actually, on stage is one thing. New York, but... New York. New York was actually not bad. His front lat spread from New York. Not bad. Um... Everywhere else? Bad. And he actually posts it now. I've I've seen a recent update um, where he's posting a lot of these are loading, but oh yeah, no, he the 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 training, the train or the uh, yeah, the the practice pictures and things of that nature. Yeah, he 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 looks decent in it because he has time to 
lean and okay, tilt this way and get it, let's get it perfect. I can't. But then he's I, all carved up too when you're on stage. I can't find it. But I am telling you, he's working on the uh the front double. It it certainly isn't a strong pose, it's still a weaker one. Um but as front long as lap. it's not yeah, as long as it's not front like lap, the, you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as it's not the pitfall that it is for him currently, I mean anything's an improvement, basically. You know. Vito's front lat needs work too. Yeah, he has that insane structure, but higher lats. Um, I think it really just comes down, yeah, to the to the posing. Um his, yeah, his midsection goes a little washy too. That's just the way the his that's just the way his midsection is, I've noticed. Like his abs, he doesn't really have them unless he like really flexes. I don't care. I got a market. Yeah. I don't care. Yep. Um, it's like Nick, even when it's he like stretches when out. Say they can't hit the side tricep because their arm. Is their arm yeah, won't go back. Tony yeah, said they, he can't hit that right. Like, I don't care, Tony. You gotta practice. Gotta marks what practice. I see. Do some mobility work, something. Um you can't. And then it's frustrating for these guys too that are doing they're professional bodybuilders and they have all the information we have plus more, and then we're telling them how to do stuff. <laughs> So it would be very frustrating. All right. And then Martin Fitzwater, the winner of the Detroit Pro. We'll talk about these two together. Um, but just Martin as a whole, he also took um, a year off. Last show was in 2022. Um, he did the Texas Pro, placing second to Andrew Jacked, and then the Arnold UK, placing fourth in front of, behind James Holland said, Patrick Johnson and uh, Andrew. Because I don't think Mark Hector beat him there. This is true. Um, no. So yeah, Mark Hector was soft. Yeah, everyone was really expecting a lot of big things for him. You know, everyone was on the Mark Hector hype train, and I was like, you know, he's looking looking a bit. It was small. all these UK bodybuilders everybody was excited about. Yeah. Yeah, and um, you know what? You know what? Samson Dota was least on the radar. For all of these UK boys back a few years back, because he had James Hollings, said he had Mark Hector, Jamie the Giant. Eh, throw we'll throw Samson Dowd in that list just to be nice to him. Diasha, Diasha, yeah. Um, there's a lot of UK bodybuilders. Reg Park was from the UK, you know. Was he, or was he from South Africa? Red, red. South Africa. He's from the UK. He's a British, British bodybuilder. He's Reg Park. It, was he born in South Africa? Or did I just make that? Did, did I just Africa. make that up? <clears throat> he used to live in South Africa for a bit, did he not? Don't don't bother me with your semantic. There's a reason I'm that's making that where, connection. There's that, a reason I'm making that connection. The Pretoria, South Africa. He was in uh, Pumping Iron in South Africa. You yeah, know Reg was in Pumping Iron. He was in that movie. Where? When they handed Arnold his, when Arnold won, Red just standing there with his like his collar, nice shirt. It didn't. I I bet I would catch that now, but I haven't watched Pumping Iron in a couple of years. I got to be there honest. Was, there, there was a bunch of scenes in it where Reg and Arnold were sitting by the pool talking, and they were cut. They, they didn't put it in. No. Yeah. There was a bunch of scenes that were cut from that. And Arnold bought all up all the footage, did he not? And then uh, he just kind of yeah, has it. it out. Some of yeah. it's leaking out. No, Arnold put, talking pretty pretty nasty about Robbie Robinson. <laughs> he puts it out um a lot in his uh, newsletter, the uh, Pump Club or whatever he calls it. But he like uh, he'll release a, a a clip every so often with that newsletter. Why yeah. they never put Robbie in the movie is kind of probably probably had something to do with the racism. Yeah, yeah. Al Beckles should have been in the Al Beckles placed high. He should have been in the movie. They threw in Serge Nebre right at the last second because they had no choice. They thought he was he, doing adult films. Him. That was the well. That well, was the excuse. No, he, I don't think no, they really he, thought that. He 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 does. He's a movie actor in France. Yes, he's done hundreds of movies, and he didn't want to sign the thing unless he's going to get paid because he's an actor. I'm not going to be in a movie, and he, yeah, that's smart. All the other guys should have been that smart too. He said, "No, I'm not doing this unless." Of course, the budget was very low. Yeah. So they had him just in the scenes that they needed him, and they probably still had to pay him for that. Yeah. But he was but, a, he was a famous actor. And but the he excuse, was like, no, I'm not going to be in your movie. 
the excuse they used was he was in Robbie was wanted to be in it. They said Surge was starring in adult films, which he wasn't. Film. Yeah. Like, oh, these no. aren't Maybe this isn't the image. Her, I don't know. No, they were they, they said, No, you are doing explicit adult films. And he said, No, I didn't. But they said, Well, you know, we're not gonna pay you anyway. That's what I thought. That's what I heard. Pretty pretty easy to play the race game back then. And I don't want to get into that. You get hate because of that. And it's like, well, I hate to break it to you, but it did exist. And they certainly were doing that back then. I'm not saying that Joe Weider and his staff were that way, but he might have been scared that the public was that way. For and sure. That's what happened. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so back to what someone in my chat, <laughs> someone in my chat called uh, Martin, their second favorite racist in bodybuilding. I don't know Martin where that racist? I don't know where that comes from. I don't think Martin is racist, but I do remember when well, he called. I don't think he is. He did call Andrew Jack a. Uh, he said, "I lost to a bag of chocolate milk," at uh, at the Arnold UK. He said that after the Arnold because Andrew Jack, obviously not known for the condition, Martin can no. get in good condition, but he said, "I lost to a bag of chocolate milk." Now, I've heard people call him a glass of milk. And I'm white right now. Look how pale I am. On the, says the sun's pointing on me. I look like a glass of milk. Uh, That's terrible. That's terrible to say that. Oh, I mean, I'll have to. I'll have to cancel. If, cancel if, you if somebody is a racist, they shouldn't say that. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I don't think it's a necessarily racist remark. I think. People I mean, need to take it easy. Uh, yeah, I mean, the bag of milk thing is 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 a funny insult, regardless, but. You know, to better suit it, maybe make it a little more personal. Chocolate milk can be thrown in there. But he it's, got it's really hard to be a racist in bodybuilding. Yeah. He he got, he got really, with the team everywhere. He was really upset after that. And I think that's Martin what he's, was? Martin he was really upset after the Arnold UK, yes. And then at oh, some a lot, you mean. Yeah, and then at some point or another, him and Nick got into it, and then Nick he was like, Yo, Nick's gonna throw a claw and like die. And then that's when Martin lost the sponsor, which was Axe and Sledge, I believe. Um, oh, yeah. All that, that happened? I never, I never realized that. Yes. This is why a lot of people do not like Martin because uh, he's recently. See, I don't pay attention to any of that stuff. He's super young. And so, like, uh, he's recently, you know, he said, like, oh, I just flew off the handle. You know, I'm a, I'm a young guy, kind of a, re a redneck. You know, he was, he's young a country boy. as dumb as old people. Young people and old people, they they just say <laughs> yeah. kind of. I'm I'm so glad there wasn't cameras around when I was younger. Yeah, yeah, they uh they both suffer from like the same, the same thing, kind of not really. Um, old people think they can get away with what they used to. Young people think they know best. Both people think they know what they don't, and they know how to act, but they don't. This is coming from a young person, young. of course. They should be yeah. they should be middle aged like us. <laughs> I'm not even middle aged. Actually, I'm younger. Yeah. Very young, yeah. Um. People assume I'm younger. I think than I am, just by the way I talk. I would say so. I would say so. Um. So yeah, Martin got really upset after losing those shows, and then said, "Never realized that. Never realized that." See, some of your viewers are getting this information, so it's not just a review on a. Event. That's you're getting good information. Um, I know he was arrested. Oh, man, I f what for? No drugs, marijuana, possession. Weed, yeah, possession. Tutors. Yep, yep, possession. I forgot about weed. that. I forgot about that. He was. Um. So yeah, a lot of drama with Martin. A little bit of marijuana. A little bit of marijuana. Yeah. Um. But after those shows, he got really upset and said. I'm shutting it down. I'm not even going to try for my Olympic qualification. I'm going to listen to the judges and just grow for the next year. Came back. Well, they took his lead, though. Yeah. Yeah. It, he came back. I think he was already complete. He has every body part. I think the arms came up the most specifically, and they were probably his weakest. But other than that, very, very complete. He just brought everything up um, to an even higher level. Would you Would you agree with that? Like, what does he miss? I, I think the, the biggest improvement was, like you said, Everything, his total package, the confidence, the way he holds everything. I don't know if any specific muscles are popping anymore because he was good at the Texas. Yeah. But yes, it's, it's the overall shine, the package. Confidence. You walked uh, in there and won. 
I mean, besides like a peaking issue, which I think he just needs to have, and this is an ongoing problem with him. He just needs to have slightly thinner skin upstairs. Other than that, I think he's a okay. Like in terms of like muscularity, in terms of every body part, I think like, I don't really think he's missing anything. He just needs to continue to grow. Um, yeah, just watch the midsection. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe a little bit. Keep he can, eye on it. he can pull a vacuum and everything. Just when he crunches down, yeah. it kind of yeah. pops out a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Derek, Derek Lunsford, same, same issue was going on with him. No, well, there are current Mr. Olympia doesn't even have an absent eyes. So it well, is that's just it. That's, it, just, that's it. just it. All right. So I want to get to the comparison at prejudging. Who did you have winning? Like before the results are called before you even saw finals, who did you have winning? I, now I'm, I do it this way. I didn't have anybody winning. Okay. I sided with just slightly for a good veto. Mm. But I no way, shape, or form had a winner. It was up to the judges are going to tell me who won. It was that close. Okay. Because front double, it, uh, Martin actually has a better, when he, when he does the vacuum, when he does the vacuum, he has a better overall shape the midsection, like every the torso heap is a better shape than good vetoes. I would concur. So there is aspects about that first shot that is arguably. I would good veto that shot though. He has the wow factor for sure, and the better arms. I did too. I did too. I did. Too. I did too. But there's definitely. Yeah, he has better overall shape. You can see than Vito, but Vito's bigger and more muscly. Even there, you can kind of see, not blocky by any means. I mean, look at Rodriguez. That's blocky, but. That is blocky. When you compare, sure. when you. Yeah, yeah. Most blocky physique of all time. That would be a good video. Uh, Martin, uh, William Martins. Willie Martins? I could find a blockier one than that. Well, you don't want to. I saw someone in my chat. They said uh, Martin has the. And Will Martins has the perfect one to one shoulder to waist ratio. There was a bodybuilder that won the uh, the Masters. Forget his name. That guy was blocky. Okay. Yeah, see that shape. See that shape in that front double? I'm trying to find the video. Okay. And then after, after the show was all said and done, after you watched finals, did you agree with the result of Martin winning? Well, like I said, I was excited to hear... Who won? Because I didn't know. Okay. And I'm not going to go out there and say, oh, I knew, I knew he was going to win. Or, oh, well, I thought he, I had the wrong guy picked. I thought Good Vito was going to win. But I mean, look at the sh shreds. Look at the shreds. Video footage, you, you really need to watch it. Mm -hmm. Because pitchers, Vito looks more, a little bit more separation. So you're going to say, oh, he's more, he's more conditioned. Not necessarily. And the rear lat is not necessarily all the way to good veto either. If you look at the lower lats, how he's filled yeah. out with the arms. Martin has. You could argue that pose. Really, you could. So at pre-judging, yeah, at pre-judging, I had, um, I said, Martin's going to win. And of course, I'm always right. Yeah. So um, Martin did end up winning. The way I saw it, um, I'm going to do a full top two analysis. I know you already beat me to the punch. Um, but I did Martin, them before the event was even over. So I know you cheated. You got inside information. Well, no, I watched the, I had the live stream and I was just taking screenshots and doing them right fast. It's hard to do. And I, I know you, you, you're, you're welcome to try it. If you want yeah, to keep no, up. I think I have before. I think I have before, and I was like, I'm not doing this. I'll not, just wait. Not fun, is it? No, it certainly isn't. Um, but basically, Martin. Oh, my coffee while I was doing it too. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it's it's a frantic thing to be doing. Um, Martin, more complete, and that's just it. The back specifically is probably what did it. Um, and then being sharper at finals was the icing on the cake, and that's why he won by straight. First at finals, I think it could have still been close, um, but it was only one point um, 
at prejudging. I don't know if you know that. His, his, yeah, Vito's midsection was not quite as tight in the finals. I think he had other aspects that were just as good, but I don't know if his abs were as tight. See, when they, you compare the two? Yeah, Martin's I think was look very pop, bubbly. Now, genetically speaking, I'd go with Vito all day long with the midsection. Yes. But that's yes. nor here nor there. If you're not in condition, I don't care if you're Lee Priest. You got the good abs, but you're still... Always look a little spilled over. And yep. that's where the whole Brandeo, Tonio controversy came in. It's like, Tonio's more conditioned. Yeah, but he's this, and he's so much more... And it's like, well, how much more conditioned is he? And I think it was close enough that it, yeah, I, it was a close call. Same with this. Do you? And I think that's awesome. I know. I, I'm. I'm gonna push. I'm gonna push on this. Do you agree with the outcome here? I know you said both guys should win. Do you maybe agree more with the outcome, or do you think Good Vito maybe should have won? I don't disagree. But you could have said the same about, about Good Vito, too. You would have said, I don't really disagree. No, I wouldn't have disagreed at all. In fact, I would have said, that's who I had winning. Mm. And then when Martin won, I was like, well, that's not who I had winning. But it was absolutely close enough that I'm not going to complain. I see. I see. So that was the Detroit I'm a Martin Pro. fan boy. Understandable. Understandable. Oh, here is the scorecard. Let me get back to sharing my screen after these technical difficulties. Anyway, as I was saying, can you see the scorecard? Oh, no, there it is. There it is. Okay. Discre there it is. Which, do you have any? Do you have any issues with the scorecard? Because they're all straight, corresponding to whatever the placings they got. You know, straight forth. I, I would have had it. I would have had it slightly different. I would have had it slightly different, but I don't complain necessarily with this, what they brought. I would have had Vito, Martin, Gordon, maybe Justin, and then maybe uh, Harry Harris, followed yeah. by Gabriel. But um, I, I, Justin might even have lost to... Uh, no, no, no. Justin's too big. Yeah, too big. Too big. Um, would you have... Veto ahead at prejudging? Do you think that's fair to say, like objectively, even though you I did... was I was more I was more leaning towards Martin at the finals. Okay. That that, that seems to be sense. the consensus. But definitely even seems though to be... I probably still had Veto enough. But closer. Closer. So it probably made a difference. Now let's talk about some of the people that could have done Detroit. Could have done Detroit. Not just like picking random names out of the hat. Like, oh, you should have done Detroit. Should have gotten ready for it. Because anybody could have done. Anybody could do any show, really. Like, if you get ready for it, anybody could do that. So I don't really do that. I want to say people that were were in striking distance for Detroit that could have feasibly done Detroit, but didn't do it because you know this lineup was six names and Fuad put he backed up everything he said. You guys want more prize money? 25k for first place plus bonus awards for a little extra fun. That's fun for the fans and a little extra cash. Um 275, that's your taxes. Yeah. Not even. Not yeah, even. uh black backdrop, you got it. Better lining, you got it. Uh got it. top-notch photography, for sure. A top-notch live stream as well. You have everything from a fan's perspective and an athlete's perspective. Um and most importantly, most importantly, we had a, a good match for first, which yeah. I keep stressing. Like, this is the most important part of the event. If we have a battle for the title, but, I don't care how good the under undercard matches are. That's what I'm saying. You could have had an even better undercard and perhaps an even better. You could have had like a three or four man. It's race. interesting. It's interesting. But yeah. And hey, if you have a top four. Four that, guys that can win. That, that could win. That's even better. So that's a show. The first guy I want to talk about that was never committed to the show but should have done it, Tonio and JQ Culturismo. That's the already, obvious guy. Yes, he's the obvious guy. So he's in shape. He's competing after. He's gonna. But yeah. will he be able to nail New York? No, if he competes in between. Does it matter? Or will Does he be better? Doesn't matter if he nails it. 
Yeah. Well, he could be he could be in trouble with Quentin. Yeah, other guys for sure. Um, depending on how much like how much beef stew is looking like, so on and so forth. Anything, anything less than seconds gonna be yeah, that that would be a little a little embarrassing to say the least. Um, because he's been talking so much with Nick Walker. They've been going back and forth. Um, I, I think it's certainly possible too. I, I'm actually looking for it to happen. I think uh that's just how the story is getting set up. Um, but rapid fire, do you think Tonio could have won this show? Um, I'm looking at these pictures you got up here and I'm quite impressed with this comparison. I think Martin would be taller, not maybe as tall as I Tonio, think closer. You know, they did step on stage once. Can you the guess angle, it? the angle is different? Could you What's guess that? at which show, could you guess at which show they stepped on stage together in? These two? Yes, they did once right beside uh... each other. The other Texas? Nope. Legion Sports Fest 2021. Oh, that's right. I didn't know that, but I I, I was doing some research, and uh, they did because I, I needed a height comparison. Um, but yeah, so mm -hmm. Martin was actually a little bit taller um, than Tony yes. in a lot of those poses. So they're, yeah, they're probably I remember his height. back was right wide in the comparisons, too. Mm -hmm. Was uh, I do remember that now because they, they were close, I think, in, in placings. Tonio's back was not I think it was his first open. It was his first open. I it definitely would have been very close, if not that show for sure. Yeah, and I, then I think you're right because though. wasn't that the one with the the little guy Sean Clarita won it? Yeah, against the two taller guys. Sergio so yeah, it, it was all these two twelve guys coming up, and he did it. He did the show too, and then Tony O'Dunn won the show the next year against Justin Rodriguez. Against Justin Rodriguez. Um, so yes, this, this comparison's not prep sizing. I mean, and even if it was, I think Tony would still win. Man, Martin's legs are going to look a lot bigger than, and they're, the he, cuts are deeper. Even like Raphael, uh, Tony was kind of like that too. He has hard grainy, not as much deep cuts in the quads. So yep. these guys are pretty comparable. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm. I'm looking. I'm not really even listening to you right now. I'm thinking about setting this one up myself. Um, do you, do you think? Um, so basically, definitely could have won for sure. There's a, a big possibility, if not the outright Just, favorite. In the eyes of reality and the judges, it's these are the two guys that should compete because they both just beat Good Vito. Now, I think Tonio beat Good Vito more so, more handily. Yeah, than Martin did, but I think Good Vito was much more polished at Detroit. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I think Martin would have beat uh, Good Vito from uh, South America too. quite handily. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, a good, good match. A darn good match. I will certainly I set this one up myself. I'm actually going to add a couple of these other names in here too. Um, another name. Do they got back shots here before you? Let me check. They got one. Oh, yeah, there's one there. That's pretty tough. I give Martin the Guy's lower body. Sizing again. Sizing again. Martin the lower body for sure. Martin the lower body for sure. And I Maybe think not the glutes, but... he may do enough in the back. I don't know. Mm, Tonio's got some wicked detail back there. Martin has more of that overall, just like raw thickness to him, though. He, he is leaning, this... leaning back. Yeah, the separation Tonio's isn't perfect. as neat. Yeah. Look at like Dexter the Blade Jackson, just yeah. as perfect as if you drew it out. Even the lat spread. I think if Martin I was still, a, I, if Martin was a bit taller, I think this one probably would have gone to him. I don't know, man. I think that's easier to say than the rear double, in my opinion. I'm look I'm looking at just the back. If you take the lower half into the equation, plus well, he's gonna be bigger if it's sized correctly. It's the entire pose, Mark. Yeah. I focus on. I'm just looking at because I know. I know. I figure for sure Martin's winning the lower half. Okay. So, is he beating Tonio more in the lower half mm. than Tonio is beating him in the back? Yes. It's a, it's a close, close call. I just love Tonio's back. The little bit of vascularity in there, like a little paprika on the top of your potato salad. Not necessary, but it looks good. 
I think you can give, I mean, if Tony even takes both of the back poses, I think you can give Martin a lot of these other ones. Side chest, I'd give to him. He's, he's winning from the side. There's no doubt about that. Maybe even the most muscular. I don't think they pick the most flattering picture for Martin on the most muscular. I kind of like the one where he has one hand slightly in front. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think, I think I think the abs and thigh and the most muscular could go either way. Yeah, I I just kind of prefer Martin for that. I think the I, front doubles going to Martin, but the front lats going to Tonio. I would probably agree. Again, not the most flattering picture. No. Um, well, he he just. For some reason, he has the structure, and he's always been that way. Look at his Texas pitchers last year. He doesn't – I don't know. I don't know what he's not doing for his front lat. He's too thickly developed everywhere. Like he, he's, he's suffering from too much muscle. But his rear lat looks good, and that's what's so vexing. Just hit the rear lat, do it from the front. See? His silhouette has to look better than that if he turned around. Yeah. Gotta be. Yeah. I think also these are prejudging pictures. A lot of people said the finals were better. Maybe, you know, he'd be better yeah. with in the finals. I, I look at look at the pictures of from from the finals. It's kind of the same story. I mean But yeah, T Tonio would have been oh, there's the finals there. That's gotta they gotta show it in that. Oh, there it is. Yeah, see, same thing. A little bit better. Yeah. I mean that, probably that's not the best all, screenshot. I've done so many comparisons with him and it, it seems to be how he hits his pose. So who um, else do you think? William was actually committed for the uh, the show. Yeah. Um, I'll go got to the Detroit. Detroit. I'll be honest. He's got some midsection issues. He's getting ridiculed online about it. Uh, yeah, that that's... <laughs> I feel bad for the guy, you know. I get it, I get it, but... I don't think he can help it too much. <laughs> but should he have done the show regardless? Sure. Another name. Yeah, I, I say the same thing. He wouldn't have got last. He would have beat Justin. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Um. He would have beat Gabrielle. Maybe you should do that comparison. Um, Justin <laughs> versus William Martin. I don't think that would get the 10% likes. I would vote for it. I'd send my followers to vote for it and, and yeah, like the video. Gets, if it gets 10%, I'll do anything. But I have to draw a line somewhere. This is a... It's It's my job. When it wasn't my job, I would do Bruce Lee versus Burt Reynolds. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't. I got to divide my time because I, I have to donate time to other channels like this, too, for podcasts, things of that nature. And you're so kind for doing so. Another name. And my friend left earlier. You'll probably never come back. Yeah. He, you'll probably never yeah, see him again. This, <laughs> this guy here. He literally just... He, he might out. have made a top three. He he I, might have actually made a top three. He literally just said uh, he's going to uh, go to another offseason. Let's just, just like, brother, you just did one. Now, who did um, Akeem beat him? Mar uh, Mo Shaban was dead last at the Arnold Ohio, second to no. last at the Arnold UK. No, somebody else. He beat somebody. No, no. I'm almost positive he beat somebody. At the Arnold UK, he beat Antoine. I thought he beat Horse MD. Horse MD was ninth. Mo, Sh Mo Shaban was 10th. So Mo placed dead last? I am 99% sure. Oh, I thought you were looking at the cheat, cheat, cheat. I am. I am now. You've got me wondering. Um, They only go to sixth on this website? Oh. Uh. Get a get a grip. Um, go, go to that amble, amble. I know it's in Russian, but you can still tell. You're right. I should do it myself, but I'm lazy sitting here having a coffee. I'm a well, guest. Yeah, you're a guest. You're a guest. This isn't. Who are we looking up? Um, okay. So, what did you think? You think you think he'd be horse? I thought he did. I thought he beat somebody else too. I thought there was somebody else that we're not thinking of. It would have been maybe Justin, but Justin beat Horse, and Justin Mo Mo. I don't think beat Justin. I thought you were looking at the cheat sheet. Okay, here we go. All right, finally, <laughs> Mo Shaban was in fact dead last, tenth. Horse MD was ninth. Justin was eighth. Well, I'm an idiot.
And then at the Arnold UK, I said he was second to last, a slight improvement, and that it's true. And Antoine was behind him. But then after that, he said, oh, I'm going to take some time off. And then it's just, you know, what was his last show before before uh, the Arnold? Wasn't it back in like 2021, 2022 maybe? I thought he competed last year, not at the Legion, but a show like that. I could be totally, uh, I'm wrong. Uh, placing, but I, I thought he did compete. KO uh, Egyptian show, right? Maybe. Something like that, yeah. And did he lose to... Uh, Regan? Assange? Oh, that show, that show. Um, Roman Fritz won a show there. What show was that? According to NBC News Online, his last show was the 2022 Mr. Olympia. Oh, okay. And not every show is on NBC News Online, though. Um, no. But I think that's I think that's correct. I yeah, don't remember. No, you could be right. You could be right. Um. So yeah, he took that time off and came back in 2024, so a full year off, and then immediately says, oh, I didn't do too well. Let's immediately go back into another offseason, even though he committed to Detroit beforehand, which he may not have signed the contract or whatever. But if you know, if you tell a promoter that you're going to do the show, it it's nice, not just in bodybuilding, but to, for anything to follow up on your commitments. It's like a universal rule for life. If you if you can do it. um, But like you said, could have been a top three guy pretty easily. I think he could have beaten could Justin. Have made, it, made it interesting. But after you told me he plays dead last, I'm thinking, well, maybe not. Yeah, he didn't beat Justin, but I mean, that's a, that's a welcome name to the, the lineup at least. I think he definitely could have made a push for top three. What? Uh, okay. I'm in the middle of a very important podcast here with Dylan. She's sitting there staring at me until I ask her what she wants. <laughs> Sorry. Don't don't turn down a good lunch for this podcast, Mark. Oh, make me a good lunch. You like that word, lunch? I'm actually I don't a big eat, fan. I just eat meals. Yeah, I, I'm the same. I'm the same. I'm I a meal chicken, too. I eat chicken and whatever. Chicken and rice right now. I'm trying to lean out a little bit. I get you. You know, another guy who committed to the show, and then after both Arnold's decided to pull out, John De La Rosa. He was set to do Detroit. Yes. Oh, yes. That's right. That's right. I had him. I had him. The show? In the... No. I think he could have. I had him second. If anyone could have, I think he stacks up very well to Martin. Like they, to me, they have very similar physiques. Did I have him second? Maybe I had him third. I I think second was the ceiling here for him. To be honest, I think he could have beaten Good Vito on completeness, and as long as he. Peaked well again and had good condition. I think he's very, very comparable to Martin. Now, John De La Rosa would have made this show. For sure. Would have been awesome. Another one of those. He, he, he pulled out um, because he said, uh, same kind of thing as Mo Shaban. Um, I want to improve. Um, but he's going to do Chicago or something like that. Um, so he wants to take eight weeks to improve. And it's just like, what improvements can you make? Serious improvements that can you make in eight weeks when you could have qualified here for the Olympia or potentially gotten ve very close and then shut it down and have more time to improve before the Olympia. Mm. Did he do so, Chicago last year? He did second to Justin Shire. He should have beat Justin. I think so. I'm not saying like should have technically beat him, but he with what he's bringing now. Cause he's just, that was a comeback. After like a torn bicep. Exactly. And a, a lot of time off as well. And time yeah. truly off. It wasn't just improving. Like like he, like you said, he had an, an injury. And uh, he had business things going on, a lot of personal things. So he did, like some of that was actual true time off. But now he's, yeah. everyone says it's the best John ever. Why not do Detroit? He was, better, he was better at the Tampa than he was at the Chicago. Yep. And he's even, even better, better at the Arnold. Both so of you them can imagine good. if he went to the Detroit... He likely won the bloody show. I think he had honestly the best chance, maybe even, maybe even more than Tonio. Maybe not. I think oh, they're close. Tonio, Tonio, and him, and Good Vito. 
and Martin all went at it. That would have been your top four right there. Smaller guys, but very complete. Like they're not Every missing anything. Yeah. Every one of them. And we would have been waiting as fans when they were calling the fourth place because we wouldn't have known which one it was. And the upset of face on the guy that think oh, I should have won and they put me fourth. Because a lot of, you know, every one of them could have won. You know who could have made the show even more exciting? James. James Holland said. Another guy that, like I said, I'm not just pulling these names out like, oh, you should have done Detroit. You should have done Detroit. No, he was just, he's in shape. And the thing was, literally he's the week shape. before this, he he was pushing down as hard as possible. He said, I'm just going to, he said, I'm just going to run an experiment with my conditioning and push down as hard as he can um, and then try to improve before he does another show. And then he even did a mock peak week before the week of Detroit. And it's just like, oh, okay, he's probably going to compete. He's just keeping it under wraps. Doesn't mock compete. Peak week. They, they should just do that all the time anyway. I don't know why more don't. At worst, you can kind of front load into the show. Like, oh, I spilled over. Well, just front load into the show. Some of these guys, they celebrated a little bit too much after the events. They yeah. get into... It's seven, hard not seven, to. Seven day pizza eating binges. It's hard not, you know, once you don't have something for so many weeks and then you have a little taste of it. Yeah. It, but yeah, James literally did a mock peak week before all this. Um, was in the shape of his life. Probably the one of the best James ever. I still maybe think 2020, those 2020 packages were pretty good too. Um, best James we've seen in a while for sure. Um, M Pro or U- Europa. Europa Pro, yeah. Um, but. With Fuad being his friend and with him being in the shape, I, uh, I, I thought think they were friends. He's on the podcast from time to time, yes. for sure. Yes, I know Ian is and Nick and things of that nature, but I was sure he was too. James is. Um, he uh, would have been a big presence up there. A, di- a definitely a contrast for sure. Up on the stage, uh huh. And He's got to go and cover the camera, cover it with the microphone so you can't see. And he just didn't do it. And I said this in. I think you heard the podcast of me and EP09. I had some harsh words for James. And basically, I'll say it again. He was scared to do the show. And I'm not saying he was scared of getting beat. He was scared of disappointing himself. I think that's a pretty safe thing to, th- to say. James has very high expectations for himself. And he has a bad taste in his mouth ever since the 2021 Olympia, where he, he felt he dropped the ball. Maybe he did. Um, I think he did. But I, I oh, yeah. think I think he... Yeah, you know, yeah. he should have got back out there and done Detroit because now will he qualify for the Olympia? We'll go back through the list and I'll ask you. Um, but I guess we can start with James. Is James going to qualify for the Olympia now? Probably not. I mean, he seems to he 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 preps differently. He's prepped raw and without a coach. But he he does he does it right sometimes. Like uh, we were saying, the Europa. And the British, he had a coach. He comes in full and massive, and veins popping everywhere. And then he goes into this other prep, like he did at the Olympia. He comes in all this, trying to get super depleted. And he looks weak. He looks like he can't even lift his head. Yeah, and it's like he got no vascularity. This isn't James. He's trying to go for that thin skin condition when he doesn't. And then he, and then he he did the tsunami. If you remember the tsunami, that was a great there was showing no pressure for him. There was no pressure. He went in and figured, hey, what the heck? Uh, maybe I'll eat a little bit of pizza there. Maybe have some vodka, whatever, whatever they, you know, he carved up and he looked mass. He looked like he did in 2020. Yeah. He won the show. Um. So I want to go through some of these contests I have. Um, I just have the actual IFBB schedule up here and I've heard 14. But I'm going to count some of the ones that I know have um, open. Oh, because there are plenty of classic qualifiers and so on. But open. There's New York. There's Cali Pro. There's... And after the Cali Pro, we're getting into June now. Um, let's see here. We have... Nope, that's a classic show. We have Toronto. We have Impro. We, oh, we're getting past you and I'm flip, flipping pages. Flex Weekend Pro, aka Italy Pro. Um, Flex Pro Italy. Yeah. Um, Orlando will we'll have open, I believe. Um, Mr. Big Evolution. Which uh, is? 
I thought I it's had a in, different name. It's in Spain, but they're calling the Impro Classic yeah, kind of Spain. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Vancouver. The Euro Muscle Show, which I don't believe it's not the Europa Pro. Euro Muscle Show was really focusing on on the Expo. I don't think oh. they will have open Chicago. Oh. Tampa. Then Texas. Then Texas, you're right. Um they're, they're always back to back. And that's <laughs> I just re I, I remember that they're back to back. And that's it. That puts us in September. And I'm sure I've missed a couple, maybe one or two that are maybe newer that I don't know. Um they don't do the Boston anymore, eh? No. No. Because this time slot that Detroit is basically the new Boston, you know, the show between the Arnold and New York. It's very, it's a very hard time slot to fill because bodybuilding is kind of a summer sport, you know, not, not really, not really a name. Like we don't have a season, but most of the shows are concentrated in late summer, early fall. Um, tsunami nutrition, apparently that will have open. We'll say it does. We'll, th we'll throw it in there. Um, there. There was a bunch of Europa shows there one year, 2021. They were all Europa. Europa France, Europa Spain, Europa Pro. I think, let's say, but yeah, that's 12 right there. And let's say I missed a couple. Let's say there's about 14, 15. Let's say that number is correct. Out of those shows I mentioned, we know, we already know some of these names. Like, they're already ahead. Hunter hasn't announced yet. He'll probably do Tampa, Texas, something like that. He likes doing those shows. He's done both multiple times now. Probably do those. Andrew Jack. Oh, go. Um, Dubai will be in there. Dubai Pro, that's one I definitely missed. Um, is that Andrew, an open? Yes. Uh, it is now this year. year. It is now this year. Hundred thousand sure. dollar. That's a really good show. Hundred thousand for for open. Jesus. Yep. Um, Andrew Jack is going to do that one. Nathan said he's definitely a, a guarantee. Um, Impro is going to have Beirut, Crizo, um, Chicago, Beirut and Crizo. Yes. Um, yeah, Beirut could uh, upset, could there. upset Crizo there. Beirut is underrated. It just we d we don't ever see him. So all these shows have somebody in them. And that's just the names we know of. Brett Wilkin needs to qualify. Um, Nathan Dash, I said, needs to qualify. Uh, Big Rami may be coming back. I, I guess that doesn't really count. He doesn't Big need Rami's to doing uh, Pittsburgh, isn't he? That's a guest posing. Yeah. Yeah. And then William yeah. Bonac will, will maybe pick up a pro win. Who knows? He'll be at a pro show because he will have to attempt to qualify at least. So out of all these shows, let's start with James. Can James qualify for the Olympia? Does he have a good so. chance? I don't. I don't think. I don't like his chances. Missed opportunity here. You think? I think it is a new time. I think every spot at that Olympia is valued, and that's why I think we're going to see good matchups. We're, we have seen good matchups because there's more than one person going into these events to get a ticket, and Hollingshead is going to have a very hard time. Trying to wrestle away one of these tickets from a Tony O'Burton or a things of that nature. You know. I mean John Della Rosa, for instance. I mean, he I don't I don't see Hollings had beaten this guy, but you said he's taking time off, so he ain't gonna be competing. Um, he's taking time off, you know, like we said, time off in parentheses quotations. Um you know, he wants to improve a little bit, but in that eight weeks, I think he would have been better off gunning for Detroit and then taking more time off and just risking it to be honest because do you like John's chances I do I like him better than be James's right it has to be the right show oh yeah look at the Arnold placing yeah um I mean yeah I, I could see him at the Olympia I think I unless think he's, unless he's waiting do you put it above a 50% chance that he gets to the Olympia if he's competing. Yes, he is competing this year. Just later. If he knows, if he has the right manager or what have you, picking the right show, yeah. If he goes in there like Steve Kuklo used to go in there thinking, oh, I don't care who I'm competing against, then it's probably less than 50. But if he's going to go into the right show, yes. Yeah. Well, And, of course, we'll have to wait and see, and he'll have to wait and see if that's what his plan is. But, yeah. Oh, Tonio made his account private. You don't follow Tonio? I guess I didn't. Do now. But uh yeah. Probably after the 
after the all... everybody attacking them. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, people can be brutal, man. For sure. Um, but I guess I'm asking you to be brutal <laughs> here. Does Tonio have a chance to get to the to the Olympia, and is it a good one? I think he has along the same lines As of a uh, John or James. Uh, De, La, De La Rosa? No, no, no. Maybe even better. Better than John? I, I think he is pretty he... eager to get to that Olympia stage to maybe place ahead of Brandeo. Is, is he has a goal? And when a guy's he... got a goal, yeah. You know, um, that's he... I think that's his main would be his main focus on going to the Olympia. Mm hmm. Not to win it. But, you know, I think we'll see him do California because it's just a week after New York. He do Cali. He did um, he, Cali last year. Exactly. Um, so I see him doing that show. Um, but it's going to have everyone that didn't do well in New York going to that one as well. Yeah, and then, I think you can handle everybody there. And the people that want to stay on the East Coast will just do Toronto a couple weeks later. So, like, you're going to have a lot of spillover because all these shows are close together from – every show not to mention guys that are just coming and gunning for a one-time a one-time deal like i'm coming in to do the show if i don't do it you know you'll have a guy like Beirut doing the impro classic even though some guys from new york who are still hunting for the qualification at that point may spill over you're going to have uh, a mix of guys that have been competing and have it so very very yeah very very competitive this year um we're going to have the three that qualified from uh, last year. Probably Big Rami, um, as long as he's, he still wants to, um, which he you says he Big does. Rami's competing again this year? Yeah, I think so. We'll see. I think if he gets booed off the stage in Pittsburgh, he's like, man, you look you look awful. And this is a guest post. If, so yeah, if he looks any worse, then we'll be in. able to. We'll be able to see. Yeah. You know, the, the arms are T Rex in it. And nobody, nobody likes T Rex arms. Yeah. And I think everyone is, no one cares about his condition. It's a guest posing and he's had time off. But we definitely want to see how's that, how those lats look in that, those lats and the lat insertions. We'll be able to tell the holes in the quads because they're so deep that it doesn't matter what condition he's in. Um, and like you said, the arm volume we'll be able to tell regardless of condition as well. Yeah, it's gonna be. And I'm the more... lineup, the lineups, and the the judges have already set their. You know, we we understand what's going on. They're not favoring him anymore. Yeah, they're placing him well below guys that he's more conditioned than. Um. So where where does he go? Mo Shaban. I'm not gonna bring his picture up, but yeah. I don't see his chances at all for going to the Olympia. And even when he does, he's one of those guys, like James Holling said, I don't get excited to see him going into the L. Nerves get That's... to these guys? I don't know. Yeah, you know, James would be another guy, like, if you are nervous, no one is, like, I may I may have just called him out for being scared. But it's one thing to be scared of disappointing yourself and having a lot of these nerves. That's A-OK. -okay. But addressing the problem, getting a good coach and a good team around you is what you should be doing if this is your actual professional career, um, yeah. instead of just kind of winging it. You know, you know, he's done with Yamamoto now. Who Holling said, Yep, this was his last month with Yamamoto. Oh, hmm. so he no may, idea. I don't know if he's changing sponsors, he has a gym and whatnot. Um, so he'll be uh, uh, probably okay with the income, but yeah, uh, this he said somewhere that this is his last month with Yamamoto. Oh, yeah, I mean, these guys are they're they're not hurting. Well, that, that's what James said was his reason of not getting to the uh. The Detroit, he said, "Oh, I can't, I can't afford it." And but we know that's not true because everyone has offered multiple people, not just food, offered to pay for travel and whatnot. So can't afford the shot to his ego. Yeah, and like I said, it's it's one thing to be nervous. Everyone is nervous for sure, but that's where a good coach comes in. That's exactly what they're for. Because you're they not in shape. I mean, if you know you're not in shape too, the nerves is going to adjust. But that's the thing. James was in shape, and he was looking good. Like I, Nathan, I'm not going to pull it up, but Nathan said in a, in one of his comments, he was like, you're looking good, mate. Why don't you go to Detroit? And then James was like, I look awful. 
What are you talking about? You're not going to do the British accent when you do Nathan Diasha's voice. I can't even understand Nathan. I was trying to watch a full day of eating with Nathan Diasha. I, I turned it off. I legitimately couldn't understand him. I can understand him just perfectly. I don't know, understand why people don't get it. Because he doesn't talk like that. It's not the accent. It's how close he puts his words together. Maybe I'll st I can still understand it. No, no. You know, the people, people from London, England, they all sound the same. That sounds more like uh, Dorian Yates. I think Dorian, even though he's from a poorer part of London, sounds a lot more Oh, refined. I'm from Yorkshire Pudding. Exactly. Exactly. Yorkshire Pudding. The weather's not very good in England. It's hard to get a good steak. It's hard to get anything in England. Imagine if British people were real. It's where my grandfather's from. I'm sorry? All right. He, he lived most of his life in Canada, though. So, Is it really? I'm sure at one point it was better. Where, in Canada? Yeah. Oh, yeah, because of the over there, it was like religion was like the law. And it's like, I'm not into that, homie. And it's like, well, I'm going to have to burn you at the stake. That is that is how things roll. <laughs> whoa, um, whoa, dude. All right, all right. I believe in it. The flood, everything. All right. <laughs> take it easy. Take it easy. Real. So that's it. I think that's it. Overall, Detroit Pro. Good show. Props to Fuad for the lighting production and everything. Your what, what were your uh, overall thoughts on the show? Now, I got a little shout out from Fuad Obiad on the on Instagram. Really? Put it, yeah, he put it on his story. Message sending it in the messenger. Said th thanks. I I shared it in my on my story. I actually shared it. On Is my it story. up now? Yeah, should be. Be there. It's not. So need needless to say. So no? It's gone? No. Did you post it on your YouTube? No. no uh I just put it on my story on uh, Instagram. Well today's Tuesday. Did you put it up on Saturday or Sunday? I mean. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how that works. It only stays up for 24 oh, hours. Yeah. yeah, it's gone. Oh, yeah. well. well, actually, Fuad. Hold on a second. I'll see if I can. Yeah, because. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. Darn. Oh, well. No, it was it was cool, though. But anyway, needless to say, having said that. It was amazing. <laughs> he, mentioned, he mentioned me, so it's pretty hard for me to say anything bad about the Detroit Pro. No, I'm saying, but I have heard some criticism about. I think it was the the the, the ticket Expo. price for the seats. They were. Are you, are you referring the, to Muscle Discord's uh, interview? Yeah, with the yes, 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 yes. That's, um, the, that's all I'm going off of was the Muscle Discord. You know. Video. I didn't listen to all of it yet because I did I plan on doing that. I didn't listen to all of it either. But um, Brian seemed like a little negative Nancy. I got to Yeah, say. well, you got to kind of – I like Matt. But when you – I don't care what somebody's saying. If they just sound – like Bob Ciccarello is hard to listen to, like his, his YouTube videos. He's a good MC, but his YouTube videos just – Like his actual takes? Like, like I the mean, actual... There's 10, 10 minutes in the video, and he's still doing sponsors. Today's video is brought to you by Panada Sports and Jim Mannion and Tyler Mannion Celsius. and J.M. Mannion and all these Celsius. And he's just – that's all, all he comes in. He's going to be his old man. Just that's all he's going to be saying. Celsius. Uh, Jim Mannion. Uh, yeah. Take it easy, Bob. Take it easy. But yeah, um, I, did. I couldn't listen to the rest of it. So you're personally attacking Brian, I guess. Um, oh, no. But yeah, he seemed a little, he seemed very concerned with a lot of the bad things, which I guess that's what it was about. Um, but he I was tried, tried not to focus on it. He, I mean, he did also focus on a lot of things that we can't speak to, like the expo and like the physical things that obviously we can't, we weren't there. We didn't pay admission at the door or whatever. Um, I didn't even look for tickets. Uh, maybe I did at one point, but I, I've forgotten the price and for the prices. Um, I would say thirty dollars for a live stream. I think you could have knocked that bad boy down to twenty. New York Pro early bird pricing is twenty 
and you get all the pro divisions. I think every single pro division um, at the New York Pro this year. So, I mean, was the quality good? Yeah, and I was okay with paying 30 for that. I was okay with supporting this particular show, but yeah. I would like to see it. Because the first one. I would like to see it come down. I think $20, perfect. Even then, like, it's for a bodybuilding. I'd prefer to see nine ninety nine. I'd buy every single one of them. But I mean, oh, they get you know they're they're trying to raise the price for the for the athletes too. So I guess yeah, get, you got to get the money from somewhere. Ex that's why I was okay with supporting the show because I saw well they're raising money, they're giving out more prize money, they're giving out extra awards. I'm okay with it. Um, but yeah, I, I even mean, watched the amateurs. I didn't mind actually. Whatever. It, yeah, some people like that. It's just it's hard for me to get into it because I like getting emotionally invested in the stories as well. You know, like oh, this guy was talking crap about this guy, and you know, this guy's coming well, back. Sure. I, I like seeing that, and I just don't know that with amateurs because they their story is just beginning. Um, so yeah, I don't think I don't think just from a viewer's perspective, I can't say really anything bad about the show. That Fuad could immediately change. Like, would I like to see the lineup bigger? Yes, but Fuad really did all in his power to control that. He gave them everything they asked for. The only thing is it's in a poor time slot, but there were still guys that were in shape, that were in striking distance to do the show that we talked about. So, but yep. you know, I think lighting. next year uh, it'll be a, the test. The inaugural ones are always sure. tests. Yeah, um, but yeah, next year it's still going to have the same time slot, though. I I've heard it's going to have the same time slot, roughly between the Arnold and the the New York. So keep it, yeah, keep it. it it's going to be, it's going to, it's never going to be the best spot. We're never going to have the best names. It just is what it is. But actually, we may have a lot of spillover from the Arnold. We're never going to get Hottie and Samson doing the show. I, I I'm going to predict, you know, the top, the very very top guys. But I think we'll have a lot of spillover yeah. from the Arnold. Like a lot Sam of people are doing the Arnold next year. Pretty easily did it. I think he'll he'll enjoy that guest posing spot. No, but I mean, if he didn't do all the other shows, yeah. If he, if he decided to take time off after the Olympia, and then yeah, um, but on I, where he lands. like next year, Hunter will probably be in. Hunter, Hunter said he wants to do the Arnold, and you know it's five hundred thousand dollars. Derek has expressed interest in doing it. He said he probably will. He, obviously, you have to make that call after the Olympia. Like if you're down. Physically, no, if he plays the second, if Derek doesn't win the Olympia, he's doing the Arnold. Um, I think regardless, though, he has said he's uh he wants to. I think everyone wants to. Everyone wants. Now to. that that Arnold raised the price, the Arnold might be the big show. I I hope it is. They listen to the fans more. Quite frankly, I'll have to put the Arnold champion in the middle of my uh my backdrop on my channel. I have Derek Lund. That's I what we should do. Olympia champion. I should start putting the Arnold champion there as YouTubers and as the people that, uh, that, that have some type of influence in this industry, we're going to have to start pushing our agenda of making the Arnold the number one show. The Olympia is good though, too. The Olympia just irks me because I feel like they don't listen. They don't. And they won't not with Bob Chicarello hanging around. No, got to stop this evil force of Chicarello. <laughs> hey, isn't he the athletes rep? Yeah, supposed to be, but they're also <laughs> supposed to have, I think it's 90% of the athletes agree to this. Oh, you can't have 90% agree on anything. 90% of the athletes didn't even know Bob was the oh, athlete. Oh, so that, it's a makes, big sense. It's that a makes sense. That makes sense. Nobody, they, it was something that was Sean Ray tried to vie for this position. Yeah. I mean, and they, they he forged signatures or something that's funny along their lines. That's and it's petty. Just like, but then they say, Oh, I didn't forge the signatures. And Craig Titus was involved, and Craig said, I never signed it. And you know, as much as I, I don't, it was I think, interesting back in the day. Yeah. Even though Fuad <laughs> rubs me the wrong way, I don't think, Why is he not the athlete trap? Because I think he said he would do it. You notice Bob doesn't get along with Fuad Arbiak. And, you know, a lot of people don't, but you can't argue, like... Get along Fuad. with Fuad or Bob or both? Both. Both. Yeah. Like, yeah. Fuad is putting his money where his mouth is, you know? Like, hey, we're this is my show, and, we're, and I'm running it. Not how I want. Maybe he wanted to do something different. But what he wants is athletes. He wants what the athletes and fans want. And that's yeah, that was I, his I focus. More than, you know, he, he's... Bob, he competed for a long time, but he never competed 
at the the top top level, I guess you could say. Yeah. He only did one Olympia. I'm sure at his stature he was you know, I'm competing at the big pro shows, but he only did one Olympia. Mm -hmm. Fu Fuad did Fuad do an Olympia? I believe he did one or two. I did think maybe Arnold. one. I think maybe he did one. I know he did do an Arnold, yeah. A Arnold at least. Um won a pro show, if I'm not mistaken. He's more of a man of the people. Yeah, for sure. The Ian Valier. He hangs around with the Ian Valiers, where Bob tries to hang around with Arnold Schwarzenegger. He tries to hang around with the best of the best of the you know, best. You know, Ian, Ian did Ian and Fuad did the commentary. I didn't know that because I muted yeah. it because I was playing it and I was like, oh uh, my I missed Ian. I'm going to have Ian on this podcast. Mark my words. Ian is one of the best minds, like the one of the best eyes, actually. Underrated eye. Like all of his analysis, spot on. Spot he on. He probably watches your channel. I doubt it. He watches mine. Well, you have a lot. Of, you, you know, you have just a few more subscribers than me. Um, but, yeah, I, but that don't matter. Bodybuilders, it's a niche thing. You know, if something's about bodybuilding and you're a bodybuilder and you watch YouTube channels, you probably watch most of them. Yeah. The algorithm. Well, who who had put one of my comparisons on, on his channel? And he, then he was like, oh, who is this guy? No, that was Nick Walker. He's like, mute this crap. Oh, so yeah, mute yeah. Yeah. Mute me. But so which leads me to believe that Nick also has watched my videos and has been annoyed by my voice. But Ian, Ian goes, because they were looking through the poses, and he goes, no, he, he he always has all the poses. You click through, and he goes, he went to the most muscular, and he, he goes, well, some most of the time he puts two two most musculars on there, too, the crab, because I usually do. I make mm. note of that. Yeah. So the way he was talking, I'm like, so Ian Valier watches my videos? Everyone, please That's screenshot cool. this on your Instagrams and whatnot, and please tag Ian Valier, so that way he'll come on the channel and talk about something. It could be absolutely anything. <laughs> Maybe bodybuilding related, if we're lucky. Um, so yeah, great show. Looking forward to, we have a little bit of a, a lull in here before the next show, and then we really start ramping up. New York will be next, and then after that, it's off to the races. These are kind of the prelims. Good. How do you, uh, I guess, final question. How do you feel about the season so far? Because this really is like first quarter. How do you feel about it? You know how I feel about the 2024 season. I just made a video about it. I did. I'm I haven't watched it. I just saw. I just saw it this morning. The matchups, the newcomers, the guys that are coming back. You got John De La Rosa for goodness sakes. It's going to be John De La Rosa. It's going to be one of the best seasons I think in years. Um, because yeah. I think after Phil Heath and even like slightly during the later years of Phil Heath's reign, it just kind of was getting stale. You know, we didn't have a whole lot of new talent coming up in the Olympia, obviously the same result over and over and over again. Um, but now it's not like, only the same results, but the same one and two over yeah. and over and over and over again. And uh, now, now, and then Bill's gone, but then after Sean Roden, and then he didn't get to compete again. And then Brandon Kerr, we have a lot of back and forth and now we still kind of have that, but now it's even more competitive. It's not back and forth because no one is good enough. It's back and forth because these guys are all yeah. on a level playing field now. There's no one true champion right now. And the judging criteria is... I don't want to diss the Phil Heath era and the judging because every time I look at it, I'm like, well, gut or no gut, I don't see anybody beating Phil. Underrated, in my in opinion. Year, years before Roden, other than, other than 2018, Roden... Wasn't super peeled, and his back was a little shallow. Mm -hmm. And even certain years, he did a little bit of protrusion in the midsection. For sure. A couple of years. For sure. He did. Even in 2018, his stomach wasn't perfectly flat. Shame on you. He has my favorite physique of all time, but I have no problem saying that. That's actually not my favorite package, though. Um, 2017 Arnold Europe is my favorite physique of all time from Sean Roden. For Roden, yeah. 2013 uh, Olympia was good too. Uh, I see a lot of people talking about the 2014 Australia Pro and the Arnold. They were very close yeah. together, I believe. But yeah, that uh, so excited for the 2024 season. Very excited about the 24 season because right. the matchups already, the matchups it, we've seen. It makes it a lot of people are always like, oh, I want to see as many guys as possible for the Olympia. But another reason this is so interesting this year is because the spots like you said 
Every one of them is actually valued this year. They're not just giving them ticket. out this year. That ticket is. Yeah. I mean, a good ticket. 14, 15 shows left, maybe even less. Um, and we have, I could probably, if you give me enough time, like two minutes, I could probably name 30 guys that still need to qualify that could stand on the Olympia stage. Well, already you have, you got Derek, Hattie, Samson. Rami. Martin Fitzwater. Who did you say? Rami. But he's not going to compete at the He is. He is. I promise you. We'll see. Hey, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Rafael Brandeo. Rafael Brandeo. Look at those five guys. Just um, so far. Can we add Nick Walker in there? Can we? No. No. Yes. Yes, we can. Did, where did Nick walk? Did Nick Walker get into the top 10 at the Olympia? I mean, is no. he cakewalking his way through the New York Pro onto the Olympia? Yes. Yes. Do you, but you didn't answer the question. Did he get into the top 10 at the Olympia? In our hearts and minds. He didn't. So You're I'm right. just saying right. I will right. celebrate after he gets handed the trophy. But even in the last pose down, he could ah, 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 cramp up and fall down like Hamstring happened to Paul Gillette. <laughs> Paul Gillette fell on the stage and started vibrating. Da, 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 da. At the Arnold Classic and at the Olympia. He did it twice, Paul Gillette. It's yeah, hey, it certainly happens. Um, he cramped up too, and his stomach popped way out, and it looked so weird. And they had to carry him off the stage. It looked like a laid him on a table backstage, and that's where that famous yeah. photo comes from, right? Like, yeah, you always see those an alien, an alien popped out of his stomach right then. That's and there. exactly what happened. And then Bob Chicarello was born. No, Bob's older than Paul. That's that's <laughs> you, you see, yeah, that, that's true. That's true. That's true. Anyway, he was living inside of him for that many years. For sure. For sure. For sure. Okay. Detroit Pro. Good show. Excited for the 2024 season. I predict it's going to be one of the best in years. Um, so that's it. Mark, could you please give us a proper outro? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us for today's podcast is it actual podcast if we're not in the same room i don't think so it's just kind of a video or talk back and forth but we hope you enjoyed it and our thoughts and opinions are just that thoughts and opinions they're not meant to be taken too seriously we're not professional judges we weren't there but we do have some uh, good opinions so all right that's all right say we're here with mark's max muscle and dylan from, from Project Bodybuilding. See, that's why I can't have a podcast. I don't know how to intro or outro. I think, I think, thanks for watching and see you later would suffice. Take it away. <laughs> thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time.